my, my man, Carl from Eric Thomas set all this up. He's like, dude, Mark, just don't touch anything. Nice. Like hit this button, hit that. That's beautiful. And don't screw anything else up. That's the way I wanted it. I'm like, I don't want to have to mess with Point it. Sometimes I'll mess it up. I'll text yeah. him. and be like, dude, what other button did you, you only have like three buttons <laughs> to choose from. I love it. <laughs> so here's the intro. Boom. Want to rise above what holds you back? These are the stories of those fighting that battle. It might also be the story of you. I'm Dan Waldschmidt, author of Edgy Conversations and strategist of billion dollar companies all over the world. This is Mark Menard, author of The Story of You, the guy who knows a thing or two about never giving up. You're listening to Elevating Beyond. Let's get started. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Elevating Beyond with a two-word mission statement, change lives, and boom. I always laugh at myself because I have like uh, literally like three buttons that I'm <laughs> supposed to hit, and, and I'm proud when I don't screw it up. Yeah. So I always say, Carl, you'll be happy. <laughs> so uh, listen, everyone, I am here with my man, Billy Carson, with... Man, if I was to go to read like a bio bio of yeah. you, that would be the rep. This should be like, all right, that's a wrap. <laughs> like that would be the next 45 minutes of the show. <laughs> B- Billy, and, and we'll go through like the story behind the story, but ch- like forbidden knowledge, malt author, yeah. w- worldwide best-selling author, mm-hmm. international best-selling author, yeah multiple businesses, MIT, like stuff with NASA, stuff with music, producing, (laughs) and uh, Billy, plus what's cool is we live like right down the street from each other. I know, that's great. Right, which um, in this space, sometimes there can be people that can seem to have a lot of influence. And then I've met them sometimes behind the scenes and they don't really have like a business or anything going on. <laughs> so I could tell you for a fact. I've been through that before with somebody. Me too. <laughs> Bill, Billy, Billy's, I don't, we're, and we'll talk about it today, but Billy is, is the real deal. <laughs> and I know that because like our kids are friends. We live in the same neighborhood, which uh, I've, I've seen that. I've seen yeah. people who really are who they say they are, which is great. But I've been like taken aback by some when I really first got in that were that I thought were like one thing. And then I'm like behind the scenes, like, (laughs) whoa, dude, like what? You don't have. (laughs) I know I've been there. I I literally came around the corner to come to your house. Literally. Just right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my son Gilbert rides his little electric scooter to your place all the time. Right. (laughs) (laughs) So, so yeah, Billy, like with, with us talking, like, obviously you have built a huge audience on, on multiple platforms mm-hmm. for, from the one I know on Instagram, just a million plus YouTube, yeah. but it, like, and so much more going on, but like, yeah. and with, with businesses, I heard you talking about even the one that you're getting ready to take public, yep. which is, which is really cool. That's yeah the whole other level of learning and understanding. Huge, huge undertaking. Right. Yeah. 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 That's exciting, man. I'm excited to, to even learn from how that's going too. Cause it's, that gets crazy. I've got a brand new roadmap just laid out for this. So, and I'm more than willing to give up the game to anyone who wants to learn and be able to duplicate what I'm doing. So with that, that's like building a business and then getting it to the level where you're actually taking it public like to IPO? Well, go from a reg CF to a reg A plus to an IPO and then into NASDAQ. Into Na- Oh, wow. Yeah. It actually into NASDAQ. Right. That's, that's amazing. Next level. It's a billion dollar play. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so fascinating. And he, here's what I always love about the show. Like we, we were talking the other day here at our our clubhouse, like in the, in the gym. And as we were connecting more, I was like opening up about being in jail at age 17. And then you were talking to me about like being in Miami, Mm -hmm. being homeless at a point in time. And I'm like, man, we got to have you on the show. (laughs) Cause uh, a lot of people, 
you know, they could see all that you're doing now mm-hmm. and they, they're, they're going to think like, well, yeah, but he went to MIT. Right. Right. Like he didn't, he didn't struggle. Right. Like he, he just, you know, he was just born so intelligent. Yeah. That like, that's what the jail me would have thought. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's Assumptions. not true. People assume and they judge. Yeah. Based on the perspective that they have, which a lot of the times is extremely limited. It's a limited perspective. And then their brain formulates the entire concept of of what they feel or think about that person and what they think or believe that person has gone through to get to where they are. And a lot of the times it's totally off. (laughs) Yeah. Well, usually always. Yeah. Like I like in all honesty, in my personal experience, I, I have not truly met anyone that's that's successful that's really built up businesses Mm. that doesn't just work their ass off to get it done and and have put in like the blood sweat and tears and put everything on the line yeah (laughs) you know i mean you know obviously yeah but i i and and that always like continues to inspire me too because like it shows basically anyone can do anything. That's right. But you've got to just freaking you got to work, man. You got to be innovative. You have to be a um, you know, a, a self motivator. In mm. other words, you can't wait for somebody to get you up to go do things, and uh, you have to be a visionary. Yeah, and a risk, and a risk taker. You do. <laughs> you do, and you got to take. That's the thing too. Is like there was another point. Um, I heard you talking about, well, first, let me, let me bring them back to, so what happened, like what age were you and what was going on where the, where you were homeless? Like, yeah. how do you go? Was that, bef- that's before MIT? Oh, that's a long time ago. I mean, I was in my, I was at, uh, I think I just turned 20 or I was 19 or 20. <clears throat> and, um, I was doing very well prior to that. I was, uh, making about $10,000 a week back then. We're really? talking about, you know, back then. Right now, that would be like making 30 grand a week, you know? Right. And Especially that young, man. Yeah. And I had my own marketing company, <laughs> my own marketing agency. <clears throat> and this is before the internet. And so um, I've got my marketing agency. Uh, I wanted to play, be a basketball player. That didn't work out. The universe had different plans for me. I mm. got I, My natural talent was for marketing and sales. So I went into that. And I got this one huge client out of Miami. And this client was selling classic reproductions, classic cars. And uh, they would run these TV ads and these infomercials. And then they would give those leads to independent uh, marketing agencies or reps. And I would get these things and I would sit there at my house and I would call these people up and I would sell these um, hobbyists, these weekend hobbyists. Typically, a lot of uh, guys who did uh, repair on cars or had body shops. And they would fill these classic reproductions like 1966 Shelby Cobras, 1954 Mercedes and so forth and so on. Mm. And then they would sell them as classic reproduction, but they would make like 30,000 profit, profit per car. So it was a business opportunity slash pitch sale. I was doing very well selling those kits. And then, Was that like commission? All straight commission. Okay. I'm just an independent contractor with my own agency, marketing agency. So they oh. pass these out and I'd go home and call these people. Oh, like, wow. Okay. And uh, I was killing it. I had uh, I had several yeah. other clients, but I had minimized my client base because that was paying the most. So I put the more of my energy there. You know how that goes. Right, I right. two small clients on the side, but this company had a situation with the owners where it had some kind of big problem, some kind of big argument. One owner went back to Canada and took all the money out of the account and went to Canada with the money. <sighs> and they had owed me commissions. At that time, it was only probably like uh, two, three weeks commissions. And then it gradually grew up until the commissions were close to sixty, seventy thousand dollars And I just kept hanging on because I'm like, well, we're gonna, they kept telling me, we're gonna straighten it out, we're gonna get everybody straightened out, we're gonna make, it, make sure everybody gets paid. Mm. Long story short, I held out as long as I could. By then I had lost my house, lost my car, <laughs> and I had to go get a little hoopty car just to get around in. Right. A straight junker. <laughs> you know? So, so you had lot like you had like a mortgage, and then you put all that on the line. I had a mortgage yeah. and a brand new car. And uh, after months of not getting paid and not being able to find another client that can replace the income and the mm. level of the lifestyle I was living at, and I was in my twenties or had just turned twenty. So, are you talking about? Yeah. You know, my financial literacy game wasn't all the way up. Even though I was killing the game and I was doing better than a lot of people, I wasn't saving a lot of money. Right, right, <laughs> right. I, which I learned that the hard way too. Well, yeah. <laughs> and so I ended up sleeping in the car at this little tiny motel on the beach in Biscayne 
in, uh, in, in right down by Aventura, this little motel. And I asked the guy, I said, look, I'm trying to get back on my feet. The owner of the motel, an Arab guy, great guy. He said, yes, it's OK. You can sleep in the car. Don't get in trouble. Don't cause me any trouble. Don't bring any drugs. Da, 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 da. I said, no, yeah. I'm just trying to get on my feet. At the time, I was with somebody um, and uh, we weren't married yet, but we were together. So we would share one burrito a day from Taco Bell. Wow. Because they were 99 cents. So we yeah. Get a Taco Bell burrito. She eat half and I would eat half. Back, that, back when it was... Uh like 69, 79, 99. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I still remember the guy commercial. Uh, it was, uh, it was easy to get, you know, yeah. I little tricks too. Like you can go to Wendy's drive through and tell them you just want a bun and water and they'll give you a free bun and water, oh, free wow. water at Wendy's. And I was living like that, you know, free bun and water at Wendy's at the drive through and, uh, or, or, you know, half of a burrito. Mm. Um, and so, so I slept, I was only about almost two weeks, just under two weeks. And, uh, a friend of mine, you know, I rarely, rarely ask anyone for help, but I asked him if he can let me just hold 30 bucks. I used 10 bucks for gas. The other 20, I went to that same guy who let me sleep in the park a lot at the ho- at the motel and asked him if he, if he can give me 25, uh, $20 and change and you know, quarters, 25 cents. I went to the pay phone right outside and got the yellow pages back then, you know, we had pay phones. Right, nice. right, I remember. <clears throat> and I just started calling out of the yellow pages, cold calling companies and wow. setting my appointments, going out on them and signing them up on new marketing deals. And uh, I got a couple of prepayments, I got a couple of advance payments and that got me up off the street, got me back into a, a small apartment, a loft actually mm. initially. And then within four months, I got myself back into a car, even a nicer place. And I just built myself all the way back up because the secret is once you know the recipe to success, it never changes. That's so true. Yeah. And, and the other secret is knowing the recipe of, of adversity. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. no, because, um, something that is cool. I heard you talking about, oh, sorry guys. Um, that's my reminder telling me that Gilbert's bus would be coming home right now, <laughs> yeah. but he's, uh, they went to Ohio. So okay. it's all good. Uh, my phone's on silent other than that, but, um, yeah, norm- normally I'm not doing this. Uh, my, my listeners are used to me screwing up and stuff all the time. Billy. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> and I, I, so I just keep it in and I have so many technical glitches and mistakes <laughs> and this and that. It's I, like, look, when they, when they like what you, who you are and they like the content, it's all part of the, you know, it's all part of that. They understand. I mean, that's, that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? We're all human beings and we're all out here just trying to, you know, trying to make a, a difference in the world and they, they get it. Trust me. Yeah. That's the whole reason I started this like years ago was, um, was to help people. And I would always think of my other yeah. self in the younger years. And I'm mm-hmm. like, cause I, I've had a company and I still actively have it for mm. 16 years mm. where people have met me through like speaking or the show. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm a full like entrepreneur business owner. This I started uh-huh. as to do on the side and it's a, to help more people, yep. but then, then building off of that, like, and mm-hmm. it took on a whole other second. Yeah. It's a whole other grind. It is. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I mean, I know, you know, I mean, you're, you're like, I'm, I'm really impressed by the different levels, like where you've continued to go. And anyone that is listening to this, um, that is like fans of Elevate and Beyond, we'll have all of Billy's information where you can check him out because it's phenomenal, everything that you're doing. And, uh, like one thing I was thinking of when you mentioned being homeless was like, Something you talk about in one of your lectures, even even in your your book, I'm holding it up if you're seeing on video here, Emerald Tablets. But uh, I'm always like trying to see what camera is it. <laughs> I do the same thing. <laughs> Wait, here we go. I'll do a little close up on it. There you go. Boom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. Components of the Emerald Tablets, a beginner's guide. And one thing you mentioned in there about like... Um, I don't remember the specific term, but it, it's about like your DNA mm-hmm. and how a lot of that is, there's different things like that we can reach into in our DNA that yep. we haven't tapped into yet. Right. And when you were talking about adversity and stuff, it made me think of something uh, my guy, Jordan Peterson mentioned okay. about like DNA. And he was saying something that he he learned too was, 
the more he keeps pushing himself out of his comfort zone yeah. or facing adversity, mm -hmm. it unlocks different codes that's been built into your DNA yeah. that, that he didn't even know was there mm. and starts to release like some of those codes. And, and yeah. that in a way, like it's a different way of saying it, but mm -hmm. some of the things that you talk about, like really made me think about that. Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely right. I mean, the more that you begin to take control of your thoughts and realize that you're not your thoughts, you're the mm. observer of your thoughts. Right. And from the observation standpoint, you can observe the thoughts and you can begin, begin to make better decisions and even begin to reprogram yourself. You can stop specific thoughts, thoughts from, from um, intervening and, and, and persevering and you can alter them and put different thoughts in their place because you're observing them. You can stop and control. And when you start to do that, you actually are taking part in reprogramming yourself, yeah. re-encoding yourself. A lot of us have epigenetic memories that are stored in our DNA. Pretty much everybody does. It's right. 15 to 20 generations. Yeah. So ancestors, uh, you know, their anger, their depression, their, uh, you know, things that they were scared about or fearful. Of, it's usually a lot of things that are based on turmoil, anguish, and trauma are in your body. But also there's like the creativity. It's all there. The genius. Yes. The the warrior mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. all the other components can be there it's that, all, that you think there. aren't there. The too. The problem is the fearful or the low frequency aspect are the ones that we seem to tap into the most. And the oh. people that get to the highest level are the ones that see past that that negative frequency to what positive is already inside of them and accessing that, which is what Jordan Peterson was talking about. Yeah, it's what we see the most because you, you talk about it too, even with like the matrix and the way I look at that too is like, I can, Billy can say it much more eloquently and I'll just break <laughs> it down. But like the frequencies and stuff, honestly, it's like the mediocrity mm -hmm. in the average is the quick thing that we all can tap into the news, the yeah. negativity, mm -hmm. because that's like, sadly, the frequency that like 99% of the world is tuned into. And they really believe that that frequency is like the only rea like the mm -hmm. only reality. Yeah. And as you keep going in, there's, there's levels mm -hmm. like, you keep going to different levels, but something that I, I've always learned, and I want this like to inspire everyone listening when, even during these times when all you're hearing the news is recession, recession, That's you know, throw the towel in. Mm -hmm. I, I started my company now of 16 years in 2007 okay. when the great recession of 08 hit. Mm -hmm. And it was the same and everyone's like, what are you gonna do with <laughs> this? What do yeah. you get, you know? are you sure you should, when, when I'm already like all in yeah, and they're like, yeah, but Mark, what if this happens? And I'm like, do you not think that I'm not already like worried? <laughs> I, I don't need more. Yeah. So it's like, then in a way well, you kind of have to learn to start like guarding your mindset. You do. Yeah. You know, people will try to interject their own fears onto your life and they will project that onto you. And the problem with that is it's very contagious. Yes. And your mirror Perfect neurons word. will pick up on that. And then your mirror neurons will take over and then put that same suggestive information mm -hmm. into your body and your body will begin to act on that coding. And then you'll forget all about what you were going to do and you become a right. self-sabotager and you have you actually sabotage yourself from succeeding in something where you can definitely succeed in. Yes. It, it, man, I love it, Billy. And something else too is like what I, what I've learned is it, it's, Every time you're about to go to the next level, mm -hmm. it's like everything that you face tries to test you again. Yes. And, and I, I, I was just talking to Aiba about this last night with yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And, and then the more I talked about it, yeah. I'm like, like you said, the inner dialogue uh -huh. and I know how to, to, I'm constantly practicing it to yeah. step back and be right. like, I'm watching myself talk exactly. like that's my someone taught me that like yes. who's the person watching if I mm -hmm. can step back out of my mind and I'm watching my inner dot and it, sometimes I you can watch it talk to itself that's right. <laughs> like so true. My, my one friend told me to give it a name he's mm -hmm. like name it Johnny and I'm yeah. like because 
<laughs> you think that you're crazy, but we all are like there's, there can be fit in it. We'll argue. Yeah. But then when you get in the middle of that, mm -hmm. which I'm just going to be honest, like with how much I know it still happens sometimes yeah. and then I have to pull myself out and I'm like, man, why is this hitting? And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to have another breakthrough. It takes a lot of self-control and you have to realize the true power that's in you and don't succumb to the low frequency stuff. You have to be able to pull back, watch, and then take back control, get back in mm -hmm. brain heart coherence mode. And once you do that, you become the true person you really are, not the false person that's succumbing to all the negativity or being drawn into a situation. And speaking of like being the negativity and being drawn into a situation, just going back from starting to have like some serious success at a young age. Yeah. And then going to like being pretty much homeless. Yeah. <laughs> like you were, no, like really, because that's that, a scary thing. Some people like Billy, that's their, their story ends there. Yeah. And it's like for the rest of their life, they're talking about, I tried doing a business. Mm -hmm. That was my glory days. Someone, yeah. someone screwed me over. Mm hmm we can never win. Yeah. Like the big man's always going to win, yeah. which by the way, people will screw you over. Oh yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. I've, I've had it. I, I <laughs> like more than once. I had something with more. another dude from Canada after yeah. the show, I'm out to like it's, show notes. It's Canada. He man. opened up another uh, tax ID and he sent it to me. He's like, Hey, we're switching to this. Um, and it just sucks when you yeah. like trust them mm -hmm. because then, then some of your wiring can also get you to go to the other extreme of like, don't ever trust anyone, yeah. but also you have to, but we learn from it to where it's like, be, be guarded and don't be stupid, but also yeah. you have to it's still learn process. to trust too, you know? Yeah, you have to learn to trust. I mean, I don't take those situations as L's for losses. I take them as learning, L for learning opportunities. And then, you know, I try to figure out what I can do the next time. Mm. And I had to go through a lot of these bumps and bruises along the way because I really didn't have a mentor or a guide or anyone to look up to. Um, the internet wasn't available. I couldn't just go to my phone and type in information and get some answers real quick like t you can today. Like Everything podcasts. had to be I know, and researched right? and you had to really know information. Um, you know, so it's like, man, you can Google somebody today and just see if you can figure anything, you know. So, but back then you didn't. And so you just have to go through these bumps and bruises, but that, that's what makes our knowledge, our combined knowledge so important and mm. potent and powerful is because we've gone through the speed bumps, the bruises, the blind right. sides, and we've learned and we still have prospered. We have still prospered right. in spite of everything that hit us, everything that punched us in the gut and took the wind out of us. And so that kind of knowledge that we're imparting into, onto people is really potent because we're giving them a shortcut where if you do this, this, right. and this, and don't do what happened here, learn from my mistake here, learn from my mistake there, you can shortcut, you can get past. You're not going to get past all of them. You'll get past no. some of these bad speed bumps. Yeah, and sometimes the shortcut, like why I like, it will go even more into your story, but is just knowing like, oh man, if Wolf Billy got through this. Right than I can because yeah. uh, the other part with a mental process is there's times when it will happen to you and you'll think like, well, if I, if this was really meant for me, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have, this wouldn't be happening or yeah. I wouldn't be facing a bankruptcy or, right. and it's like, no man, like this is all part of the process. Mm -hmm. And that even that alone should help someone to be able to just know, whoa, okay. Like that happened to Billy. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but they don't have to end their story right there. Like you said earlier, you know, they can realize, well, Billy said and, and Mark said something like this could happen. I got to push through this. I can't give up now. You know, what what do you think it is? And I, I haven't quite I get like the frequencies and everything, mm -hmm. but the drive, because like in some way I, I can't I can really connect with people that have been successful, but that have been through adversity. Yeah. Like if they haven't been through like, and they're not authentic about like their struggle yeah. to me, right. Then I can't really relate. I'm not saying I don't like, but I can't relate to when someone has mm -hmm. like, I can, gotcha. I respect that. And I connect to that like authenticity. Yeah. But like, what do you think it is for you at that time? Cause you're still learning. You don't mm -hmm. know everything about, 
like how you jump out of your inner dialogue and, and yeah. subconscious and, Oh, this is all just an, uh, like, what do you think it is that was difference between that dr keeps driving you mm -hmm. to keep going yeah. through that versus someone that that's where they throw in the towel. Right. <clears throat> well, I went to Dr. Amen, Dr. Daniel Amen. He's a world's leading psychologist and he's, uh, one of the very first psychologists to start doing SPECT scans of the human brain to mm. diagnose brain injuries and trauma. And I went to him uh, and he did a SPECT scan of my brain about a year ago. And he saw a couple things from a car accident that I was in that damaged the back of my brain. But one interesting thing that he did see, he saw this diamond pattern on top. That diamond pattern is a telltale pattern. They teach this to you in university when you're studying psychiatry. It's a trauma pattern. He saw the trauma pattern. He analyzed. He could. He read me my whole life looking at from a brain scan. He knew everything about me. And he said, but what's interesting with you, Billy, you didn't develop PTSD. In other words, you didn't succumb to this trauma. Mm. He said, I developed something called PTG. He called it post-traumatic growth. I've heard of that. And I had a guest talk about that. Yeah, yeah go ahead, go the ahead. The premise behind it is I didn't take the victim mentality. Mm. Even when that situation happened with the Canadian owner who took the money from the other guy's account and they owed me money and all these other things that have happened to me with bad partners who robbed me and stole my identity and all this other crazy stuff. Right. It's like I could have sat back and took the victim mentality and threw in the towel. Right. But I didn't do that. I always saw those as opportunities for me to grow and become better and prove myself again. Mm. Whereas a lot of people would have been like, this is just too hard. I just can't, I just can't go through this. I can't keep doing this. I can't, you know, not me. It was like, man, mm -hmm. let me do better this time. Let me figure this out. Let me find a way to, uh, you know, supersede where I was even the previous time. And I continued to fight and I took it as a growth opportunity, not a PTSD opportunity where I would sit back and just, uh, you know, weep and cry and moan and claim victim, victim, victim. And those right. are the people that usually throw the towel in. It, it, it's, it is almost like, you're so focused on, I don't, it's almost like I don't even have, this does suck. Like I want to complain, but I don't even have time to. Don't have time, Because I'm man. trying to figure out where to get my next meal. You, listen, every day right? we both wake up, you and I, Yeah. because we're entrepreneurs, we're both jobless. We are unemployed mm. every single day. You can call it whatever you want to call it. If you, if you have a company, it doesn't matter. When you wake up, you're unemployed. Every like day that. we have to go out there and we got to get it. And if we don't go out and get it, people don't get diapers. People don't can't, can't pay their car, you know, pay them. These are employees and so forth. People right, rely right. On us. They can't pay their rent, their mortgages, you know, and they can't send their kids to school. We have a lot of pressure on us. Responsibility. Every yeah. Responsibility galore. Yeah. And if we don't get up and get That's it true. done, people will not get their lives done. And so mm. uh, the average person... That, that pressure will crush them. Mm. Like it will crush their spine. And for us, in some way, you have developed PTG as well. We have both grown beyond the pressure of the, all that stress and all that responsibility. And we've shot right through it. And we can hold that weight on our shoulders. Yeah, man. I didn't read my, I did not read till after jail, my first book mm. till I was 18. Wow. Like from cover to cover. Yeah. I, I would do the bare minimum to get the book reports like yeah. done, <laughs> yeah. but I never read. And I, I like, I'm serious, but I thought I was stupid Damn. because I thought that, um, I thought that you were either stupid or smart mm -hmm. and there was no in between. Okay. And then uh, obviously I've learned so much more. I've had some people that have applied to work for me that had always a 4.0 had yeah. like 1500 MBAs, <laughs> PH, more degrees than a thermometer. Like yeah. my man TD Jake says, <laughs> but, uh, they were, but they were stupid yeah. because they weren't willing to, when it came to stupid, maybe the wrong word, but it, it was so almost they had books ego no common sense. Yeah. Well, their ego was so fragile because mm -hmm. they had basically never been told they were wrong before mm -hmm. when it came to being like, that's awesome. You know this, but anyway, we're doing this thing that there is no answer in a book. Mm -hmm. We're going into uncharted territory. Mm -hmm. So now we got a problem solve yeah. and I've got to teach you some stuff that you don't know right. because I've learned this from doing it in the trenches and then they want to keep schooling me. And I'm like, okay, it's, mm -hmm. it, we're not going to work. It doesn't work out. And I've had, or when I've tried to correct them or coach them, mm -hmm. they, their ego was like, no, I've never been wrong. I, and they couldn't handle it. Yeah. And it's crazy. Then, then like I has, and I'm not saying it's like that for everyone, obviously, oh, yeah. <clears throat> but, um, some of my, like my head lady that runs dream shine, mm -hmm. 
high school degree, started working direct care, like with our individuals with yeah. developmental disabilities, just kept grinding, was willing to coach, be learned, work her way up. Mm. Now, 11 years later is be, like being groomed to be the CEO. Wow. Incredible. You know, and just had that same mindset, that yeah. same like work ethic wow. and, and stuff. Nice. I, I, and like, because you have, where, the, what part of the story then, like, I, cause I, I swear I'm, I'm doing research on you <laughs> and going through it all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up and I'm like, wait, MIT, mm -hmm. like Na something with NASA. Yeah. And so like, where does that come into the mix of you do the sales mm -hmm. at some point you had like software and apps when that like dot com was new. I, I did some, I have, I've lived so many lifetimes in one life. <laughs> Where does uh, the MIT, so did the MIT come in after this? Much for way for way longer after, you know, I had done accomplished so many things an inventor um, tech company that I started, which is first class space agency registered with uh, NASA and with uh, the European space agency to do research and research and development. Um, and, uh, various other businesses that I was running. And then I began to get called to do a lot of s shows on mainstream TV, <clears throat> excuse mm. me, science shows like, um, uh, discovery channel, history channel, travel channel, science channel, you name it. And of course, a lot of science shows and, uh, aerospace shows on and astrophysics shows on Gaia TV. And a lot of times I would see a lot of comments like, what's this guy's credentials? So I said, Oh, they don't think I have any brains mm. in my head. And I just, they think I'm just, uh, a guy that has a good memory. And so I said, you know, I'll just add a little something to my bio. So I registered for classes <laughs> at MIT. Something. MIT is a little something. <laughs> just, to say, just like it's a community <clears throat> college or something. You know, I'll register at MIT and do a little something over there. And uh, <laughs> so I did that, you know, uh, a course in applied neuroscience. And I did courses and got certificates from Harvard and ancient civilizations as well, because primarily, those are the two biggest topics that I speak on, ancient civilizations and um, and, and sciences. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I did that. And, uh, you know, and then just it's, it, it unfortunately in the world we live in, it's all about optics. So I knew that a lot more people were going to begin to come across my information. And they're going to a lot of those people may want to continue to follow based on what they thought my credentials were. Mm. So I gave them some credentials, some legitimate credentials. Man, I, again, the mindset of it could have been, oh, they don't think I'm good enough. It, it, it could have been because of my race, because, yeah. it, which, by the way, sometimes people might be racist. Right. Yeah. But and are. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of people that aren't. Yeah. Like there's just always stupid people and people that, that are you're always going to be. Yeah. But my, my whole point is like, I'm doing this to empower everyone mm -hmm. is that mindset that you flip of it. Cause it could have been like, yeah, here we go again. Mm -hmm. They don't, they just see me on TV. They yeah. don't think I'm good enough. Yeah. Now I have to like, but you're just like, all right, you want me to do that? Okay. Like, <laughs> let's go MIT. Yeah. Slash Harvard. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then all I can say is, Wow. Because it's legit. I mean, the certificates are hanging up on my wall in my house. And then, you know, another thing came along and, you know, people were like, well, how can you be an expert on this stuff? You're not an author. So I said, OK, you want to see a book, huh? <laughs> OK. Best selling book for four years in a row out of three million books in ancient civilizations. Compendium of the Animal Tablets is number one. And wow. Like, and still holding. Still for holding that. That's right that's now. crazy. That's tough. And that book is this book is 40 bucks almost. It's 30, 38, 95 plus shipping. And there's books in the same category that are in number two and number three positions that are only five bucks or six bucks. Some are free Kindles and four, right. fifth and six. So I'm competing at, you have to pay for this knowledge. And, mm. uh, and it's still hitting number one worldwide in five, five countries. It's, in, it's a bestseller in five countries. Have they translated it to other languages? It's yet? in the process of being That's translated cool. right now. They're just taking it in English, but it's got Japanese, Spanish for Spain. Um, That's awesome. French. And one other language, but yeah. And then my other book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I wrote that book as a financial <laughs> literacy it. book, right? 688 pages, this thick. It's like a financial Bible. And because uh, I started speaking on financial literacy because people were, mm. would see my lifestyle. They would get glimpses of my lifestyle from videos and things and that, you know, conversations that I'm having. And they'd be like, you know, you're supposed to be, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself for, for having money. 
and you're supposed to be, you know, a, a spiritual leader. Why do you have all these nice things? Why do you have a nice house? Why do you have nice cars? I mean, are you kidding me? People would get angry if I do a live in my car. I'm sitting in a Rolls Royce. I'm sitting in a, a brand new Escalade, a brand new Mercedes, whatever I have. Right. Right. And I'm like, so if I would have been sitting in a rusted out 1978 uh, Buick LeSabre, it would have been OK with you. But because I'm sitting in a car <laughs> that this is my, my car that I happen to be driving today. You know, and so that, I said, I have you've to do worked something your, about it. Like work my ass off, ass off, and I'm put like, everything on the <laughs> yeah. on the line. <laughs> Rolled up and, and, and still <laughs> and still have it on the line. Yeah, like that's another thing is when you get to different levels, it's yeah. like then you're just responsible for for much more. Yeah, like everything costs more. The maintenance of it, it the insurance. Up. You know, the insurance. The you know, uh, you know, my car payments are twelve thousand dollars a month uh, on my cars. The car insurance is you know. 12,900 something a year. Right. I have a, you know, you're, you already know I have a, a armed guard, right? Right. You know, who drives us around and everything else and uh, watches the house, you know, yeah, for security. Yeah, cool, cool you know? dude. It just, yeah, great guy. Yeah. And so all this stuff just compounds and adds up. It doesn't go down. They keep, expenses right. keep going up. You know, right. I have maids that come every single day except for Wednesday. Because yeah. We don't have time to spend six hours cleaning that big old house. We got to work. So I've got, <laughs> no, that's the thing, Pete, you're right. Pete, they get it twisted thinking, yeah. oh, you think you're fancy. You have maids. It's like, no, I I want to be able to sit down and put time to do a, a show with Billy today exactly. and help more people mm -hmm. and build and build the business. Like yeah. there's so much that I've done and made money on and I've done and lost money on yeah. or not made any for a long time. Yeah. One, the people they just don't see it, man. Yeah, okay. So that's why I wrote the book. Woke doesn't mean broke. Cause I had to wake people up to understand financial literacy and spirituality don't separate. They go together. Right. If you're running around talking about how inspirational, how powerful we are, we're walking, we're like gods in the flesh and we've got all this power and we're, we have the ability to motivate and inspire. And we were, we're supposed to walk and expect abundance everywhere we go and build, build, build. And then you can't pay your light bill. In your bank card. Yeah, I always I, I always say that. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's true. That's facts, though. I'm all about show and prove. Okay, right. I'm going to give you the knowledge, but at the same time, I'm going to show you I'm utilizing the same knowledge I'm giving you. I'm living it. Right, right. And, and, and weighing out, like, the difference between, I'm like, and I say the same thing, too. I used to say, like, if I become a billionaire, it's like, no, when I become a billionaire... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't wait to help exactly. more people exactly. even more because my, my wife's from Sierra Leone, West Africa. Mm -hmm. We I have my company for people with disabilities, but mm -hmm. they have nothing there. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to, I'm going to be a billionaire mm -hmm. and we're going to be able to help even more people. I'm going to live an amazing life. Yeah. I'm going Absolutely. to enjoy the fruits of my labor. You better. <laughs> but I, yeah, right. But I'm going to help more people too. You can't help people if you're broke and destitute. Right. If you continue to research me, you'll find that I received a Lifetime Achievement Award. I've raised and given away a combination of over $12 million in the last 15 years. I love that. You can't do that, bro. I'm not going to do that on a prepaid track phone in my slippers <laughs> and a robe sitting making memes all day for social media. Right. Not going to happen. Right. I'm not the type of person that's going to go out there and just hand some homeless person a slice of pizza that I didn't finish in my box. I'm going to help a thousand homeless people at the same time. You know, I have these huge drives, sock cool. drives, clothing drives. I, I buy people's houses. We, we buy cars for people. We do all this stuff. So there's levels to helping and assisting people. Some people at that level, that's fine for them. Handing a homeless person half the sandwich that they didn't finish into the throwing. That's great. Right, right. Me, yeah, there's level. level. There's levels. There's yeah. Level. You know? Yeah. And having that, I mean, we've heard it before, having more or less money, it just exposes it. It changes you because it elevates you, yeah. but, but it exposes more of who you already are. Oh, yeah. The so if you were a greedy <laughs> prick, then you're going to be more. That's but if right. you already had a good heart and you're mm -hmm. a giver, you're going to be more of a giver. You're going to be more of a giver. And I had to get a balance with that. I almost started giving away too much. You know, <laughs> I have my director hold me is. in check with Ooh. payroll. I'm always trying to pay. Yeah. And then at times she's like, dude, Mar, I think, <laughs> uh, like, I, I love Dream Shine. And, and we all, yeah. we have a thing, like, um, we teach leadership where everyone to have, like, an ownership mindset. Yeah. Uh -huh. And she's like, I love it. Like, it's my own company. Yeah. And this isn't like, like we're going to run out of my, I get it. You want to pay everyone on the line the most you can. Yeah. And that's awesome. But we have to, I'm like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've been, I'm guessing. <laughs> and that's another thing, but right. we're givers. 
Right. They were givers. And so like, you know, uh, I, in my first marriage, I got into a lot of trouble. I almost gave away everything, you know, and I realized, wait a minute. I, mm. from, so now I only give away what I can afford to lose. That's my right. motto now. I only give away what I can afford to lose. Every year, every winter, we pay single parents final notice electric bills. So everybody started texting me the other day with their bills and they have to verify who they are. And we, we call the electric company directly to pay these bills. We don't give them the money. But we've done uh, the, the That's, four years I like ago. that. Because, you know, it's cold. I mean, it's warm for us in Florida. We're, we're blessed. Yeah. But there's people out there struggling. And I've been, a, I've been a kid with no power in the yeah. winter. And I know... It is, it can, you can freeze to death. Right. You know? And so, uh, was that in New 10, York? thousand a year. That was, no, that was down here in Florida. Okay. Imagine in Florida, this is back now <clears throat> in the 1970s, 1980s. And sometimes it gets to 40. Remember, we, oh, you weren't here yet. We had all the citrus freezing. Yeah. All the yeah. snakes and all the, uh, all the frogs and all the lizards were frozen. Yeah. I wasn't here, so but I, th- I've heard, yeah, that happened yeah. in California even before too. Yeah. So it can you happen. get to that point and you were in the house and you were like shivering and you, uh, uncontrollably and you're like what the heck you know yeah i don't ever want anybody to go through that and of course i can't help every person out there and every right, family but right. we spend about 10 to sixteen thousand a year helping pay off um uh you know people's uh, electric bills but i can't do that if i'm broke right <laughs> no it's true though yeah it's true and i also weigh out too like some people go so hard at saying everyone should be an entrepreneur and i'm like Everyone should go after the purpose that's in their heart, yeah. but I don't wish this on everyone because some people mm-hmm. r- really don't want it. Yeah, they're like, not built for it. It's, and that's okay. It. It's okay. Everybody has their, their niche. They should follow what their heart desires, like work in an area where their passion is at. Right. It right. Is, even if you're an employee, if you're passionate about that job, yes, it's going to feel like just a great benefit to your life. It's going to feel like, wow, I'm really doing something I love. Versus just going to a place and punching a clock just because you got to put food on the table. Now, sometimes you have to do that to get to the level where you can find something you're passionate about. So true. But it doesn't mean everyone should be their own businessman or businesswoman. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people start kind of preaching it that way. Like, yeah, everyone should be. And it's like, man, so like some stuff that uh, some stuff that I have to go through, I don't wish it on other people. No, it's a lot of tough decisions you have to make. Yeah. And those decisions control the outcome of other people's lives. Right. And it's a pressure that comes with that. Yeah. And man. some people are built to withstand that kind of pressure and some are, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you do build it like a muscle, like yeah. your confidence and stuff mm-hmm. through the different levels. Yeah. Stuff that you couldn't do before you gradually can. And I'm, and I'm always able to be like, Oh, if I got through this thing before Mm -hmm. I thought I couldn't do now, I know I can get through this and it like builds up, you know, that that's where I think like the different levels are a blessing Mm -hmm. versus I I used to overly judge when some people would have like fame and success so quick Mm -hmm. And be like, how could they have messed up getting that $120 million contract when they turned 17 yeah. and knew, and go bankrupt? Mm-hmm. And it's like, now it makes way more sense. It makes sense. I mean, it's going to happen. You look at John Morant right now, right? Right. Suspended indefinitely from the NBA for uh, taking a gun illegally onto an airplane, a team plane, and traveling to, across state lines with it to another state, taking it into a club illegally. And so he's got a lot of violations here yeah. and a lot of potential situations, but and it, it, they could have went to the NBA finals this year. Ah. He's learning a lesson the super hard way. Now we'll see. Now I'm going to sit back and watch and see right. if he has what it takes to bounce back and learn from these mistakes and become a better person and excel beyond where he was when he made this fall. But without these falls, you'll never know how, you know, what a person is truly all about. <laughs> Exactly. Like that will become a blessing yeah, he with can him become using one of the that as a basketball tool. Players in history and he can change the minds and yeah, shape man. the hearts of kids all over the world if he beats, if he comes back from this and does better than he did before and talks to the fact that, you know, what I did was wrong, but I'm going to show you there's a better way. I, I, and, you know, I like that too, to be able to understand and show, because I, I saw like uh, Shaquille O'Neal and stuff talking mm-hmm. behind, like mentoring, like, mm-hmm. dude, we don't need to do all this guns. And it's like, look, man, like yeah. you got a $120 million contract. We, you don't have to be thugging out to no. like get respect. No, y- you know, but like when we're rate, like when we believe this perception, mm-hmm. you're, you're thinking like, Oh, I'm not it, it, like it's, 
it's people will be like, Oh, well that's just about, you don't get it. Like it's about race. And I'm like, no, I, when I was in jail and, and with both my roommates, like dealing drugs and stuff that are both dead now, mm -hmm. when I was like saying, I, I want to do something yeah. and go to college, mm -hmm. they were calling me a sellout <laughs> and they're like, people like us don't go to school. Yeah. Um, you know, you, and they're like, you think you're better than us. Uh -huh. And Billy, like a part of me was like, are they right? <laughs> because like these, these guys have had my back in yeah. a lot of hard times, but yeah, they yeah. weren't the right, as we know, real friends are going to build you up. Right. They were bringing, they were spreading that shadow. negative. Yes. No, they were either. spreading the low frequency uh, virus is what I call it. It's a low frequency virus. And then when they spread that, like I said, your mirror neurons pick it up. But luckily for you, it didn't latch on to you. You fought through that sickness. That's a, it's really a sickness. You it fought is. through it. And, yeah. uh, you know, and you didn't allow it to take over your body and get you ill, mentally ill, because if with that mental illness of that low frequency, you'll you'll actually become what they were buried in the ground six feet under. Right. Uh, you know, so it's it's really important to stay stay true to who you truly are. When you come up with ideas and inspirations to be better than what you are, follow those things. And I and the biggest thing you have to take from all these pitfalls is how do you do better? And I learned this. A genius solves problems before they happen. Mm. And so now what I do is before I make a decision, I understand the principle of cause and effect. Every decision is going to have a consequence, whether it's a good consequence or a bad consequence. Mm. But I guarantee you there will be a consequence. So now before I make a decision, I think of different decisions to make for that one situation. And then I send my mind out <clears throat> to look and analyze all the different outcomes that are going to happen. When I see the outcome that I will like and I prefer, that is the decision that I make. And I follow that to bring that outcome to me. Mm. And so I, and then it, along comes that with that is solving situations that are going to arise along the way. You can't see all of them, but a lot of them you can prethink. Right. Because of life experience. It starts experience. to get wired into your, yes. And you go, okay, this is going to happen when I do this, but I'm going to solve it with this. And so right. you begin to make adjustments before. So now you're riding the wave instead of get, waiting for the wave to crash over you. Yeah. Yes. But at times you have to have a crash over you to. Sometimes you do. You, but that's when you go, oh, this is the moment I'm in. But the better you become, the more you become the master. You vo Yeah, yeah. You begin to learn how to surf. And right now, both of us are surfing. We still have problems and things that, just, that, that shock us or, or surprise us. Right, but right. We've got so much life experience to live on. We can see things. You could tell your kid, if you do this skill, this is what's going to happen to you. Right. How do you know that? Because you, you've experienced it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It with your own eyes. Yeah. You've lived it before. Yeah. <clears throat> Whether they choose and hope they may or may not choose to listen, yeah. but I, I always try to be, that's why once my book was out there mm -hmm. with jail and stuff, yeah. it, like the different levels of part of me at that point, Bill, I was thinking, man, should I, sh like I have a company a rep with Dreamshine. What are people going to think if they yeah. know? But like you said, that inner, uh, you describe it differently. Like it's like a gut pulling because yeah. people think like, well, how do you know your purpose? And I'm like, well, it's not like this audible mm -hmm. thing comes from the sky and is like, Mark, here's exactly what to do. But it's like yeah. something when it keeps like pulling at my gut and doesn't go away. Yeah. Then I'm like, all right. Nothing wrong with putting it out. Once you expose your weaknesses to the world, nobody can use them against you. Ah. You see? And it so, empowers you. It empowers you. <clears throat> There's nothing anybody can say or do. You're right. still going to be you. You've still accomplished what you've accomplished. Guess what? They can't take it away. <laughs> I know. I, you know, and it's it, it, like when you're talking about our energy in the fields, the lower conscious will tell you, don't do this. That's going to make you look weak. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, it's the complete opposite. Yeah. It makes you stronger. It makes you stronger. And like even listening to you when I was listening to you and Elizabeth mm -hmm. and I would text you yesterday, you were both talking about yeah. dealing like, how do I deal with like an abusive and toxic relationship? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to get some things from this. And then I ended up listening. It was like an hour. Yeah. And what I loved was you were both just so authentic and real about some, some real crap that yeah. you had been through in your marriage right. that she had been through and, and you, neither one of you try to like sugarcoat anything. Yeah. Transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Transparency. People appreciate that I, and they yes. recognize it. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. You can't 
you can't truly, if you watch it long enough, I've seen some people that can like fake some of the stuff and the speaking in the public figure, yeah. but eventually <laughs> like through the Q and a and stuff, yeah. that's where like, I've learned like, Oh man, you do not. Well, you have a New York times bestseller, but you do not yeah. know anything about actually having like a company that has a lot of accolades and I, I, but no, knows nothing. I mean, very surface, extremely surface. And I was like, Oh man. Um, wow, I got to be careful of, yeah, or they, they lure you in and you start to do, you know, business with these people. And then you realize they don't have anything. They don't know. They know nothing. Incredible. Billy, really, I've seen it when, when we connected and then, uh, and I met some great people in this neighborhood, but then when we were talking more mm -hmm. and I, I'm like, okay, let me check Billy. Um, both of us, uh, knew like yeah. the dude, Eric Thomas. Right. And, um, I know you have followed his stuff before and yeah. I'm like, okay, that's a cool, like, cause yeah. he, he's someone I was telling you that when I got to know him in person, mm -hmm. hundred yeah. percent, the same dude, yeah, nice. like is who he says he is. Incredible. But I, I remember like at a, at a glance, I'm like, okay, man, Billy's killing it. He's got yeah. a, a million like plus followers on Instagram yeah. and, and everything. But and a part of me is like, Ah, man, I wonder if, if he really is, but that, you know, because <laughs> you it comes, because I've ran into, <clears throat> yeah, and, and I didn't, uh, and I'm just being like honest, mm -hmm. you know, and I, cause people think that with, with me too, but then I'm like, yeah, yeah but I wonder if, uh, uh, and then it's like, well, we live in the same neighborhood. Like yeah. it's not how to all work really hard, like to get yeah. to where we are and stuff oh, yeah. too. I mean, this isn't the, uh, this ain't the ghetto. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but, but I've had people, you know, it's cool. I'm, and then it also when I'm able to talk to people more, mm -hmm. like we were in that gym and then when yeah. you were opening up about Mark, like we didn't, you were in that car accident yeah. where dude, this is another part of adversity to your story that, when people want to give an excuse to give up is like after you were having had built up mm -hmm. this was like after you had built up s several things and stuff when that car accident happened. Right. Yeah. To where you actually got an accident, the way you described it, you didn't have your seatbelt on flew through the windshield. Yeah. So I got this injury over my eye. This is a starburst incision. They had to uh, put together a brand new eyelid for me, went through the window and over the car we hit. Because that car was doing 55, they estimated based on the impact. Wow. We were doing about 75, 80 because my friend fell asleep. He had a heavy foot, big dude like me. And I was laid back, rec fully reclined, no seatbelt, and phew, rocket ship right through the front windshield. Wow. You know, and uh, that's where I got the brain injury, which uh, put a hole in the back of my brain, which is on the TV show, Scan My Brain with Dr. Rahman. You see the hole. <sighs> he, the other two spots here created two giant dimples on the top of my brain which affected my navigation capability. So I would get lost in the house, lost in the neighborhoods, lost coming out of elevators. This happened, this happened for decades. De like this yeah. to that everyone, D this, no, when you told me that, that mm -hmm. blew like decades. Decades of being lost everywhere I go. Have to, but you kept never find my building car stuff. Enough. Yeah. You, you told me like you would be driving home with your kids like after an event. Yeah. And you'd have to wake them up and be like, oh guys. <laughs> I had to get home. I don't, but <laughs> Billy, that's crazy though. I know. Like it didn't stop you. Didn't stop me. I didn't let that stop me. You know, I mean, like I said, the people at the uh, Fort Lauderdale airport, they knew my voice when I would call them because they knew my car was lost again. <laughs> didn't they put like something in place? They put a special si <laughs> camera system at the Fort Lauderdale airport. I'm telling you, it's got to be for me. If you pull straight in, not back in, and they can see your tag, they'll tell you right where your car is now <laughs> because I, you know how much I fly. Right, Imagine right, every right. Three days I'm calling your thing. Come, somebody has to come get me on one of these little <laughs> go karts and take me to find my car. We're riding around for an hour looking for my freaking car. But now, thanks to Dr. Amen and going through his whole brain regimen of his brain supplements and his uh, and his brain uh, health uh, program, it healed. And so the most recent episode just came out. The hole in the back of my brain is gone, and these two giant nipples were my navigation gone. Wow. And how I, many? How many years later? Uh, that was uh, from uh, so 23, almost 40 years, Whoa. 37 years. Yeah. And so to be able now to know where I'm going, 
you know, remember where my car is. Uh, Elizabeth is like shocked because she sees me navigating throughout everywhere with no navigation on the, on the car. I navigate. I would, so I would she, so she knew you, it it's been that recent. Oh yeah. Yeah. No Since way. We were, we've been together for almost uh, two and a three quarters year now. So okay. when I first met her, she saw me walk into walls because my brain told me that that wall was actually a walkway, not a wall. Whoa. Uh, so you see me almost so, driving to the ocean. <laughs> this is why I have my oh, so <laughs> <laughs> It's been crazy stuff. Oh, man. I my mean, brain was creating hallucinations, hallucinations. So that's what I was just going to ask. So yeah. it wasn't just the mapping and the per- you were actually seeing a door, but it was like it was uh, it yeah. was a wall. It was so. A wall. Whoa. Yeah. And so she's seen this. She's witnessed this. So, but when the, she's the one who set me up with Dr. Amon. And oh within 10 months time. Following his regimen, my brain, which proves neuroplasticity and it proves that a brain that's damaged can be healed. And now I have my full navigation. I can see, like if I'm thinking about Boca Raton or Miami or Fort Lauderdale, I can see a map of the area from the parts I know of. And I can see how I can get to them now before Mm. I couldn't even do that. Not even close. You know, that's why I had the the full-time chauffeur. It was not because I was trying to be this big old fancy rich guy. I just couldn't drive anywhere without getting lost. That connected to me later yeah. when I was like, <laughs> no, seriously, yeah. Billy. I was like, um, that's what I mean when I'm able to talk to people. Like I relate to people that have been through yeah. and when we were able to just have that off, like authentic, right. yeah, yeah. I'm like, man. And I don't, I didn't mean before, like I didn't think, cause I knew you lived here. I knew you were incredibly successful, right. but, at a deeper level but that got at a deeper, like, man, yeah. okay. Because still there's some people that, are successful mm-hmm. and are, are do have to overly show off the yes. materialism, like on the flip side of it right, right. and constantly tell you mm-hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. there's a few people that, you know, and I, I'm just, I'm too busy to, and I'll be nice, but yeah. some are like in so much business. Did you know so-and-so got a blah, blah, blah. And, they're, <laughs> and I'm like, Oh cool. That's not, and we, you know, it's like, <laughs> I know, I know, but that's the, that's the neighborhood. That's the type of area we're in, you know? But yeah, I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm just a kid that came from the hood, a man that made it. I happen to love cars and watches, so I'm always going to have a nice car, always going to have a Good. nice watch, you know. That's my and thing. You've earned I'm probably it. never going to have tattoos, gold teeth, or a lot of necklaces. It's just not my thing. And nothing against it, it's just not my thing. Right. And um, those right. are the things I like. But yeah, chauffeurs, just because I got, I got tired of having to pull over and call Ubers. I would park my car at plazas and call Ubers and have the Uber take me all over the place. And then I would get back to my car and try to find wow. my way home again. It's for years and years of going through that. I said, you know what? It's, this is it's cheaper just to have a full-time driver. I'm safe. I'm going to make it to my destination and make it back home safely. Oh my God. That, yeah. that makes so much sense. Yeah. I, you, I'll have to show you uh, my... I'll take you my Tesla Plaid sometimes. I don't know if yeah. you've ridden one. It's, it has that, I've had the full self-driving. It's still beta mode, oh, yeah. wow. but it's pretty crazy to see how wow. far. I'm excited to see how many people in the future. Mm-hmm. It's not there yet, Yeah. but I've watched. and It's so fast too. Wow. It's like fast. It's, it's I've crazy. Been, I've, uh, my friend had one, so he took me like he just punched it. it just sat <laughs> you don't down. expect it, it right? It peel out. It just went boom. I and it makes it. no noise. First time I ever did this in Dude, a car. Aiba I- got in a huge fight when, they, oh, when I yeah. did it to her. I got it on tape because she hates fast. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> no, she was pissed. She was yeah. cussing me that out. Was she crazy. was mad. I believe it. That thing is, it shocked <laughs> me. I, I didn't think it was going to move that fast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So, I mean... <laughs> but that makes sense. That's why you've had the, sh- like the, everything with a chauffeur and yeah. the driver. But, but then also there is a part you talk about, I think you mentioned like the matrix and it kind of goes with like the broke, like mm-hmm. the fake woke that people yeah. have too. And you were saying you've also learned to use it as like a tool. Absolutely. I heard you talk Definitely about like tools. some of your business things, yeah. like, you can use it strategically yeah. of I'm not trying to do this just to show off and show when I'm better than mm-hmm. them, but success. strategically it we're closing success. a deal and I'm pulling up in the, yeah, I pulled up in rinky dinky rust bucket cars or older model cars that weren't that nice, uh, for the industry that I was in. This is based on industry. Now, some people don't have to ever pull up on anybody. I was in the industry in marketing mm. where I did. 
It's almost that like, makes sense. You know, my, I started off with the old school marketing all before all the everyone was sitting at a desk playing on the Internet. I was actually going out and seeing clients in the in the streets. Right. You know, and so you pull up on a man and he's in a car that doesn't look that successful. They automatically take that preconceived idea. This guy, he ain't, he ain't, he doesn't know how to do this. He's not that good because why would he, why would he drive a car like this? Right. And a Got friend it. of mine suggested to me, like, it's probably your car while you're not closing the deal. So I, mm. I buckled up and I took some risk and I went and got a nicer car and right away deal started closing. I said, look at this. So I knew then that your, my cars can be a tool to close deals. And since I'm always pulling up on people and move, put, moving people around, I, now I fly talent into town to film. Right. I have them picked up in a Rolls Royce. I have them picked up in a Bentley. When they, go, when they get done with the experience from the way I treat them, that 10-star treatment, they go back and they tell everyone. Yeah, man. When you work with forbidden knowledge, you're treated at the highest level. That's awesome. You're treated with so much respect, dignity. You get an armed driver. You get the highest a five-star hotel. You're getting, you know, you're getting basically um, just waited on hand and foot. And that keeps them wanting to come back to do more and more and more. And their words are going out, bring other people to me who I didn't even know was, were out there. Yeah. And so it becomes a tool, you know, that you, you utilize. And plus, at the level we are in business, you and I both know, uh, you put the car, all my cars are in my business name. They're not in my personal. Right, name. right. I'm not putting all that debt on my personal credit. No, that, no, that no. information will be shot. No, right? we're so, already paying 500 yeah. <laughs> million taxes on yeah, everything on. that we do. Exactly. <laughs> so you put it in your business name. Yeah. And then, so they're leases. So your lease payments, you get most of that back on your taxes. Plus your gas and mileage and everything else and the expense of the driver as well. Plus the Rolls Royce, for example, the weight of that car gives me another 15000 in tax credit. At the end of the day, I'm paying less for that car than the person driving a, a Hyundai. Right, right. <laughs> but And that gives you more. And, and when people are like, oh, they find all these, like the wealthy find these loopholes and they take, and it's like, no, we use those strategically and it allows you to have more time to put into what you're doing That's and right. to be successful and to give back. And on top of the loopholes, we're still, trust me, it's a lot. like I laugh when people are like that billionaire doesn't pay taxes. Please. I'm like, if his company has 50,000 people on payroll, mm -hmm. his business alone, which he owns, yeah. I know what I pay for payroll taxes payroll just taxes. for the company match That's to have like 20 full time. Yeah. <laughs> for 20 people, if you have 50,000, yeah. don't say that they're not like, Man, you just don't get it. They're eating you up. Listen, when you see like Microsoft <laughs> laying off, you know, uh, 500 people, you know why? It's a lot of taxes. That he's paying all that employment taxes. But, um, yeah, you know, and you have to also put value on yourself. So I value mm -hmm. myself. Now my value goes up over time. Now my value is $25,000 an hour. That's my value. Right. And so, you know, again, things like housekeepers. I'm not going to spend time clean out, straighten up, but I'm not going to spend time deep cleaning the house every single day when I'm, that's 25, that's 25,000 an hour. It would take me four hours to clean the house. It takes those people four hours to clean the house. That's a hundred thousand dollars gone out Easily. of my personal income. Driving myself around, if, if I'm being driven, now I'm working. Now I'm grinding. I'm making calls, business deals, networking. It's a good investment. I'm on my laptop. I'm doing, I'm taking care of business, right? I'm making 10,000 times the amount of money I'm paying this guy to drive me around. And no, it, so these are all uh, yeah, ways yeah, yeah, to yeah. maximize your efforts. It, I, I get it so much. Like I promise, yeah. but I don't know like, when to be transparent. I still go through the different levels of when I'm doing something mm -hmm. like, oh man, what, what are they going to like? I, I, sometimes I hesitate what to show on social media and stuff yeah. of, Cause I, I try to do it like strategically of like, mm -hmm. I was this dude that was in jail yeah. to do it, to not necessarily be like, Oh, you should feel like a loser if you don't have that. You know, like I try to balance it, but yeah. then a, a, a part like that, I don't know what it is. Inspired. Listen, more people, but will some be stuff will try to hold me back from that, Billy. And more I'll people think, will be inspired by you than will hate. And so what we're doing, we're mm -hmm. drawn to the trolls and the haters because those five or six negative people, they stand out, but there's hundreds, sometimes thousands of people that loved it, that yeah. you've now touched them in a deep way that you'll never know that have changed your entire life. The course of their life has changed because of what they saw you go from to where you are now. And so that's why, you know, I don't worry about the lifestyle. My thing is this, I want people to understand that spirituality and financial abundance go hand in hand. So I gotta, I'm gonna show you mm. that that's where it goes. Cause I came from underneath the gutter. I came from eating chiral syrup and toast and matzo crackers and butter 
to, you know, I can eat whatever I want any night of the week. And it's going to be the highest level is going to be five star. Mm. And I can drive in any kind of car I want. I can fly in any kind of plane I want. And the reason why I can do this is because of these principles that I enacted all my life. And I'm going to teach you these principles. I'm going to give you the game so you can duplicate this. And I'm still spiritual. I'm going to show you that the, the main goal right. is not to wait to die so you can live. But the main goal is to bring heaven to earth and live now. I'm not going to wait to die so I can live. I'm going to live now. I'm going to experience this realm mm. in the corporeal three-dimensional body. And I'm going to live it to the best of my ability. And I'm going to help as many people as I can help. And when I move on to the next dimension, I'm going to do the same thing. There's something you said, Billy, like I heard in another talk about the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I love that because regardless of your like religion, and I, I hate putting like, I believe in Jesus and I'm a, Everybody, but I, but, but listen, I'm not an inside. I hate labels. Mm -hmm. I don't preach down people's, but I also believe that there's so many different wisdoms and mm -hmm. truths yeah. that I've gathered that I'll gather. And some people be like, what are you doing hanging out with that atheist? And I'm like, dude, that <laughs> atheist is teaching me stuff. Right. He's actually, I, I people. So it's like, but the consciousness that that's what started to change my life mm -hmm. when I realized some stuff in the, in the, in the like Bible and I'm not preaching that well, so it's the same. Yeah. When I realized like, Whoa, it said like, I have given you the power to actually move mountains. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hang on a second. Yeah. There's something like even whatever you believe in, even if it's some type of like intelligent design, mm -hmm that you can tap into that, that created everything that is that power that you can have within you. And, and that's what started to get me honestly, like out of, out of jail yeah. and mm. stuff here. And that is yeah. like, I can do all things through exactly. Christ. So I would yeah. think like, okay, when I'm, you can't do this smart. Like when that mm -hmm. voice would come yeah, and it's like, man, but then I've continued to grow and get at other levels. And you talk nice. about spirituality yeah, and spirituality and wealth go hand in hand, they Go hand in hand, period, point, blank. it's abundance. People want you to think that it's, uh, it doesn't because they don't want to do the work to achieve it. It's too much work for them. It's easier for them to be lazy. It's easier for them to sleep at 12 o'clock in the afternoon to give their wife or their, or their family members excuses why they can't, uh, put, why they can't put bread on the table. Uh, it's a lot, it's, a, it's so easy to have mm. uh, a victim mentality and blame everything going on on the outside. Why I can't get this done versus putting on your boots, right? right. Your bootstraps, tying them tight and going to work. And so, um, a lot of people will shun you for showcasing abundance and spirituality, mm. but in actuality, when you, when you dig deep, deep into the knowledge and the ancient, uh, tablets and all these ancient cultures, the information left behind, these wisdom keepers always had abundance. They never had to want or ask for anything. Mm. Even if you look at Yeshua, AKA Jesus. Yeah, wherever yeah, yeah. he went, everything was provided. He didn't have to beg and ask for nothing. And guess who he hung out with? He hung out with uh, alcoholics. Yeah. You know, people who got out of jail and, and all this kind of, why? Because this is the same uh, type of uh, entity. This being on the front of my book, he's got the head of an ibis bird. That's not his real face. It's a mask. Right. But an ibis bird takes his beak and it deeps it, it digs it deep into the mud to bring up sustenance. It's a it's mm, a representation mm. of bringing darkness to light. There's no use if me and you sit here with all this knowledge and all this entrepreneurial information and spiritual knowledge we have, and we just sit here and we talk to each other back and forth every single day. Who's going to benefit from that? Until we go to the people that don't have the knowledge, they're in darkness. Yeah. Until we go to them and talk to those people and bring them the knowledge that we have in our head, we have to bring the darkness to light. They right. don't get the light. We can't transfer our consciousness into their minds by sitting here talking to ourselves. So you've yeah. got to go hang out with atheists. You've got to go hang out with this person, that person. Right. You've got to go hang out with people or check out, check on people that were, you know, that were in jail and now have made it out or whatever, or are still struggling, trying to figure out their way. In, because your mission is to bring darkness to light, period. Light in darkness, like sums up spirituality mm -hmm. in such a better way yeah. of other ways that create wars and all that. It's mm -hmm. like, there's light and there's darkness yeah. in, in everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I've learned yeah. with people too. Like I've met, 
people that were in the church that I used to go to that when they started saying, well, Mark, if you have a, a business, you should be spending all your time teaching the leadership course. I'm like, no, man, God's called me to live the sermon. Yeah. I was just in, I'm, I'm working, I'm helping my team members mm -hmm. with this, or we were just in Africa yeah. and I was talking to a dude that was about to give up and they couldn't see it not happening in the four walls of the, and yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I, I love you, but no. Like, you see, you, you are the ministry and a lot of people right. understand that. And whenever you gather with other people, that's where the ministry actually lives. You know, and a lot of the problem with a lot of religious people is they don't read the book that's been given to them in the way they're supposed to be read. They focus on only certain scriptures or certain words or verses in the, in the book. Or like rituals over it, relationship. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it, it says in there, ye are gods, number one. That's what it says in the yeah, Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Number two, it says, where two or more are gathered, uh, there I shall be in the midst of them. So when two or, or three people are now combined spiritually mm -hmm. and engaging in spiritual acts... That is a divine spark right there in the midst of you. And you can tap into that. The that's power that's to, unity and like masterminding. Exactly. That's yeah, networking. Man. The power to move mountains. The divine spark that created everything in the universe, from universe, from God, from whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. It's in it's every a, atom in, in your body. It's yeah, all in your body. it's in and us. And people are walking around like soulless avatars waiting for somebody right. to come save them when we literally were sent here to save ourselves. Right. We are the saviors. Christ never said, he's, Jesus never said he was coming back. He said Christ will return. That's mm. the Christ consciousness in every single person on this planet. Mm. That's the evolution mm. in the way of a person thinking and understanding. Being born again has nothing to do with splashing a little bit of water on your head. Right. It's about right. raising your level of consciousness to a Christ conscious level and being able to look back on your previous self and say, wow, I grew from there. Right. And you'll be born again many times in your lifetime. Yeah, there's there's levels of yes. being born again. Yes, absolutely. That's so true. Yeah, it's that that's what I mean. It's like you 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 don't have to call it a specific thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's when that light comes together. Yeah, there's so much that we always can learn from each other and unify. And right. it's what's what's unfortunate is how much division. Yeah, that we see. Like I was, I always say like. If there is like a devil, it's not the, the red tail and a pitchfork. <laughs> yeah. It's the little voice that comes into people's heads. So you, you can't, mm -hmm. you, you should be angry at this person mm -hmm. or that and, and causes that division yeah. or like holds you back from going after yeah. that dream. That's your ego. Like, right. That's your self doubt. That's all what that is. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of people have to do look in the mirror, look, put mm -hmm. your phone in selfie mode and look at yourself in the selfie mode and realize who's holding you back. Who's creating all this turmoil in your life. When you look in that mirror, you go, Oh wow, it's really me. I'm the one doing yeah. this to myself. Even if you look at the state of the world today, where we are as a people on this planet, there's 8 billion people being controlled by less than 100 families. And that's, that's travesty. Crazy. That's absolutely psychotic. Yeah. And, but who do we have to blame? You see, you can't blame the 100 families because mm -hmm. a shark in the water, when it smells blood, it's going to attack. A shark is just going to be a shark. Eight billion? We fell, we fell for the divide and conquer tactics. We fall for it hook, line, and sinker. Mm. We're all over the planet. We don't want to join together. We don't want to love one another. We don't want to become unified and plan together. And because of that, they continue to keep us divided so they can conquer us. Until we recognize that we're all the same, what is the color of... What is the color of consciousness? <laughs> no, oh my God, that should be, I'm writing that down. That, 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 that should be the name of this episode. Yeah. No, I, I love that. That's a yeah. book, dude. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the color that's, it's so true because that stuff drives me crazy yeah. and how I always can relate. You like my handwriting? <laughs> I'm watching on, too, so I can't on write the that video. Good. Me and you are both lefties. Are you? Yeah. Oh, nice. Did, did, <laughs> did the uh, ink and the pencils used to always like smear? You smear it with your hand all the time. You yeah. Can't go to the chalkboard in school, you, you erase what you're writing while you're writing. And yes. would laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Know. Yeah. But no, like exactly like conscious. I, 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 when I really think about everything, like when I, when yeah. we step back and think it's like, it's all so stupid that 
we're all human beings. Mm -hmm. We had no, we could have been born on on any like piece of dirt Mm -hmm. in this huge world. And really some (laughs) of us, like we take so much of, I was born on this piece of dirt and Mm. this makes me this or that. And like, when you really step back, it's like, I knew it as a kid. I never pledged allegiance to a flag. Oh, that was the most ridiculous thing on the planet. And I got in trouble and they were going to suspend me uh, from school. Really? I called my mom and said, you better not suspend my boy. He's free. It's a free country. He's free to do whatever he wants. Mm. He's not pledging allegiance to your, to your piece of material. Mm. I don't pledge allegiance to any flags. I'm happy that I'm living in this. I hit the I hit the genetic lottery being born in America, and I'm happy for that. Right. But I'm not going to go to the level where I'm pledging an allegiance mm. to a piece of cloth instead of pledging allegiance to humanity. Right. Right. It's not saying I don't re- like. I'm grateful. Yes. And, and I'm respectful, but I'm not. That doesn't mean that. I think that I'm better than yeah. everyone because that's right. that's what can create wars. Like that's so exactly much what crap, creates the wars, and then it creates prejudice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got this flag, and you're in that flag. Our flag's better than yours. We dominate you. We're it's this whole thing, and I'm like, I don't want to be a part of that situation. I want to be like, I love everybody. Right. These lines that are drawn that create boundaries are artificial lines that don't actually exist. They're made up on a piece of paper. When you look from space, you don't see the line. Yeah, they don't. They don't exist. And so, you know, uh, I realized that, hey, man, there's got to be some point in time where people begin to just love one another and continue to grow together and understand that we are all one people. Uh, If you travel from Earth and you've got three different races of people, we all leave the Earth at the same time in one rocket ship and we land on Mars and we meet some Martians. The Martians are going to say, where are you guys from? Who are you? We're going to say we're Earthlings. We're not going to say I'm a Floridian from Miami. Right, right, right. (laughs) It's you know so saying? true. Come on. We're, we're human. We're human beings. Yeah, we're human beings, man. We yeah. came from Earth. I, That's I, it. I, I, I was like, yeah, I'm for the human race. Mm-hmm. And like there's idiots and, yeah. and there's great people. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like bringing the light into all of it. And, yeah. and what's like and being a free thinker. Like mm-hmm. the, it's the same with Paul. Are you a Republican? Are you? A, I'm a free thinker. Thank you. Like Thank I'm you. a free thinker. Don't t- I'm going to gather my, my the best facts, the best that I can, and then make that it's just like with business. Mm-hmm. If, if we were, the, and that's that's what drives me crazy about government is not getting political. I don't have energy to waste on that no, nonsense. I'm it's, too it's building b- building my own. <laughs> but but I've had to fight the bureaucracies with Dreamshine and stuff, mm-hmm. and I, I've seen just so much of the ego and the time that they waste on, they they don't run it like an efficient business and then they won't want to look wrong. So they'll do something that screws up the whole mission. And then people will like get on the news and be like, well, they can't do that. That would mean they're admitting they're wrong. No, that actually would make them look smarter to be like, Oh, I, I effed up. We got more information. Mm -hmm. We're going to now pivot off that. Yeah. Which is, what that's, you're supposed to do strategically grows. to solve the freaking problem. Exactly. That's why I can't play. I call it poly tricks. <laughs> and I don't mess with the poly tricks because, right. you know, every four years I go down and I get in the voting line. Ah, it's like mediocre versus mediocre. When I get to the front of the line, I take the blank ballot and I write my name on it and put that <laughs> in the box. Every four years. Did I you vote put Kanye West last time though? No, no. I vote for myself. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I vote for me. You know why I vote for me? Because I am the president. Right. And that's my mindset Facts. everywhere I walk. I am the president of my life and my family. And everywhere I go, everything I do, I take that responsibility upon right. myself. And I don't care which poly tricks they vote in and who does what and what he cares about, what they don't care about, what they're going to do. It doesn't affect me. They don't dictate. That's what I tell. <laughs> no, no. People have asked, what about if this Democrat? Kid, what? I said, I started... Dream shine with nothing in mm. 2007. Mm. My office was in a barn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like literally in a barn. Wow. I, like I even, I just got married. We were in a, a, a little uh, apartment. The recession hit. It, it had negative equity. Yeah. Um, we, we had our, our son, Mo, we had mm. two kids back to back. She wow. was working the overnight shift. Mm-hmm. I come home, then have the two babies that were like twin, just no sleep, wow. like a year apart, mm. just 24 hours working, working. I'm like, I went through, I don't remember who it was Bush. Then yeah. some, then Obama, mm-hmm. the, none of them came and worked the 24 hour shifts. Nobody pulled the they shift came and went, I'm still here. That's right. 
like the business got built. Like mm-hmm. that's what I'm, t- I'm like, they don't dictate. No human being has the power to dictate Thank you. our destiny. None, not one. God. I came through so many. Pr- I remember uh, oh. Jimmy Carter, you know, Ronald Reagan, you know, Bush Sr. I mean, you just go on and on. I've been through so many, so many presidents. I told my mom, I said, how long are you adults going to fall for this trick? She started the, laughing. The, tr- the trick. <laughs> she it said, is what a trick, you talking Bill. about, son? It's I said, a the trick. trick of this thing. That's said, the matrix. Around. Look at it where we're living. I've seen presidents come and go. We're still in the same. This place ain't changing. And guess what? When I went to my old neighborhood about six, seven months ago, it's worse. <laughs> because I know it is a trick. It's like yeah. people are in you. And that's another thing of like, you want to try your best to help people, mm-hmm. but then there's a point in time where you do everything you can. Then you have to keep putting that energy elsewhere yeah. Because some people, you, you know, it may take years, it may not. And that's yeah. like us doing a, a podcast right now. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is another form of how people get knowledge and information. Another Absolutely. way, like we're givers. Yeah. And we, other perspectives. They may hear something that we both said today and be like, you know what? I never thought about it that way. That could change their whole reality. Reshape the way that they think about everything. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Like that, the whole thing with like politics and all that mm. it like makes me so happy when i'm talking with another free thinker <laughs> yeah and it's like <laughs> for real <laughs> you're still and, and it's holding and i'm like it's holding them I'm back like, and they can't even see you it. don't they get it. See it, and it and it's like <clears throat> it's gotta be but trump's and racist and by and i'm like oh my god D- dude this they're all this guy's using this as a strategy to get what he wants. Yeah. I'm like, it's really sad, actually, yeah. that someone is coming in and playing. Yeah. Oh, I care about this or that as a tactic. That's what they all do. It, uh, they all do it. Because I have approved this message. <laughs> <laughs> How many really? times have you heard that from every single Bali trickster? You know, so again, it's just about what can we do for ourselves? Right. Taking right. self-responsibility. Understanding that you are your own savior to save yourself from situations, building yourself up, taking care of your family and walking in the power that you truly have. That's the key. Anything on the outside, forget about it, because once you relinquish your power to outside sources like presidents and kings and queens and 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 poly tricksters all over the world, and <laughs> then what, all you're doing is you're giving away your energy to energy vampires. I oh, keep my man, energy. I talked about that in my book. Energy vampires That's is right. a perfect word. They're real. They're real. And with a business, you've had team members, employees. I oh, always talk boy. about the importance of weeding them out. That's another mm-hmm. thing. It's it's never fun to fire someone, yeah. but I've learned to get a lot better and teach my leaders. That's an energy vampire. Mm-hmm. We got to weed them out yeah. because they'll start biting other people. Oh, and then yeah. you have a team of yeah. toxic it's contagious. And that's what that's what the news and stuff is. Yes. It's an energy vampire. Mm-hmm. Have, I don't I don't watch the news. Yeah, me neither. But Aiba does. Maybe. I love you, honey. But <laughs> I, I we've argued about it for so long. And I what I've learned is yeah. I'll put my Dear I'll buds. listen to like YouTube and stuff. Yeah. But there's times it'll go off for mm-hmm. a minute and I'll I'll start hearing. The fear of porn. The fear of <laughs> porn. I'll start and I'm like, I'll, I'll start thinking, Billy. I'm like, why? Am I worrying about this thing that I never, I was watching the news. Like that's guarding your mindset. It's the subconscious trickery that comes in and invades your whole mind space. Then it puts you into a fear mode. And then that energy of that fear is a frequency. They eat that frequency. That's what keeps them on air. That's what keeps them going. That's what generates the money and the revenue. It's all from human energy. Mm -hmm. They are literally eating the energy in a literal form. Using that and hate. Mm-hmm. And holding people, dividing people, dividing people, holding people down. It's a recession because you said it's a recession. I don't believe there's no recession. Come on, man. Stop it. If you didn't, if you never said it was a recession, there would never have been one. The more you right. say it, the more people believe it. And they start running to the banks and suffix siphoning money out of their stock accounts because you keep telling them to be scared and to suck their money up because everything is going to crash. It's they're and creating it, it, the situation. Self-fulfilling prophecy it causes it, exactly. the banks like we actually <laughs> had the money, but because well, everyone literally just came in at once. Yeah. We don't like there's times I'll go to get money. I, I keep. I've learned the hard way Mm -hmm. to keep, you talk about money and well, like cash savings. And I I also learned I'll keep it in different areas where I can't always visually see it. Mm -hmm. 
because if I have it all on my phone and I yeah. can just tra- it makes so I like to have things strategically mm-hmm. yes. put away. Even this is for this saving. This mm-hmm. is for investing. This is yeah. like super super rainy day. Never touch. Yeah. Out of mind. Out of sight. Mm-hmm. So I've taken large quantities of actual yeah. cash out of the bank yeah, yeah. too. I don't have, have them here in my house, so don't try to. <laughs> you but have to some old school stuff, so, but. They they have to put in an order usually. They yes. have to get it. They'll have me sign some paper, mm-hmm. and and it's they'll look at me like, "What do you have? What are you doing? You have yeah. you deal? You what? You're taking fifty thousand cash? Don't yes, worry about it. But I'm I, I have a business. I've but anyway, they don't just have it. Oh, here's mm-hmm. a bag. Yeah, yeah. They had to go. They had to advance. go and get it. They don't have the money. So I mean, everyone comes in at currency. once. Yeah. The banks. The banks only have fifteen percent of the money. If you know, and and, and it's not all in the bank. Right. It's all digital. It's all fake. It's fiat. It's just based on emotion. There's no real money there. And so, uh, you know, so I try to tell people like, mm. if you can't, you, the FDIC only insures $250,000. I know. And if you have all your money at one bank in multiple accounts, they still add the accounts together and give you the one two fifty, And that takes you six to eight months. You might get it. Maybe not. Yeah. You have to sp- spread your money out into different banks. Yes. Yes. And st- the stocks, I think, it's up to like what five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Yeah. So even spread some of it in into stuff it like that. Brokerages. Too. If you keep all your money in one brokerage and that brokerage goes down, I don't keep it all in one either. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> right. <laughs> bye right. Bye. And that it's doesn't gone. make like it, 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 we yeah. can learn. You could be doing everything like mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And stuff still is going to happen. Stuff's going to happen. I learned about that. You know, <laughs> dealing like with crypto. I saw a couple of platforms go down. And I was like, I don't want this to happen to me. I linked up with another company who taught me how to put my crypto on a ledger, mm-hmm. a physical hard ledger. So my 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 ledger is in my safe. So if Coinbase, so you, you have Robinhood, uh, and all them go down. I got my money is on my ledger. You have like a wallet. Like I got a, a wallet. I got to have you teach me how to do that. Yes, because I have some crypto, man. Yeah, you got to do it. I because, have Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, and yeah. I have it in a couple different right platforms. like platforms, but not. Yeah. I have the thing to do a wallet, but I haven't. You got to get on the hard wallet. That way, guess what? They can collapse tomorrow. Those those platforms can go get deleted from Apple because I don't want Coinbase on my platform anymore. I'm going to mm. delete Coinbase, right? You're screwed. Look at FTX. I know. Hard wallet. <laughs> I was thinking about FTX, by the way. You talk about someone. Yeah. He was using, let me drive a crappy car to his advantage mm-hmm. strategically yeah. to make everyone think he was the giver. Like yes. you, like do you and I, when we're billionaires, mm-hmm. are going to be given oh, because we care. We care. He was totally using that. Yeah. I don't personally know him, but from what I've seen. He's a master manipulator. It looks like he was using that to, str- to strategically let people think I'm humble, let yeah. them, while I'm living the billionaire lifestyle by yeah. hiding it so yeah. people can look like, mm-hmm. oh, this dude's cool. He, dri- yeah. he just drives a Honda. Yep. And that collapse. Mental manipulation, huge mental manipulation. But uh, wow. you know, those people didn't have their money on a hard wallet, a lot of them. So they're, it's, it's gone. They'll never see it again. And, and good people that worked hard yes. that honestly didn't know until til they knew. I mean, that actually, that could be me right now. I need to yeah. really get that, that information that from me. you. I found some people that were just <laughs> really great fans of my work. That's cool. I met them in person. I loved what they were doing. And they spent hours with me teaching me about the whole thing from front to back Mm. and walked me holding my hand, transferring all of my crypto from everywhere I had it and getting it onto my own wallet, my own physical wallet that I put in my safe and a fireproof safe. And I feel so much more comfortable now. I like that. And something else I like about it is... You're, I wouldn't even be paying attention. It would even help my investment mm-hmm. longer to not be, oh, it's good. If it's going yeah. up or down, like, mm-hmm. oh man, it went up yeah. 500,000% and I right. haven't looked at it because yeah. I have it here. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll cash some of that in now. Yeah, possible, you know. So so with how far ahead of stuff that you always were, Billy, like you got into like .com and yeah. apps, like when no one was really Nobody. doing it yet. Nobody. 1998, I saw a commercial on the TV It was a black screen, just jet black. And it said, (laughs) IBM.com. And I said, what in the world is just dot com? Just a powerful commercial, just a black screen with dot com. I go to the bookstore. That's all you can do. I don't have a computer. Nobody had computers back then. Right, right. And I go, 
the World Wide Web. This is what this is. And I remember an old Hopi prophecy that talked about the world being connected by a web. And when that happens, mm. that information will travel around the world instantaneously. And I have been waiting on that moment because I had all this information in my head, all this knowledge yeah. I wanted to share. And I was like, I arrived. It's here. Oh, wow. In my lifetime. You were seeing that potential already. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool yeah, though, yeah. because your brain is wired to, mm -hmm. but, but then how did you start thinking so this is what to happened. create like a business or an app? It happened like this. So, uh, I find, find all this out the next day, the next day, Mark, a neighbor comes outside and he's a exchange student from Arabia. And he says, Hey, he knew I had a healthcare discount healthcare business that I was marketing. He said, I have to build a website for a company as part of my internship. You, are you interested? I said, I was just researching the dot com yesterday. Man, Billy, isn't that something else Crazy. about like the, the con like when you start Boom. going into your path, oh, like things. Man. That's law of attraction. You know, my, my intention right. was put on that. I sat over his shoulder. Mm. He used a program called Front Page 98, if you know, but it's made by Microsoft. Um, and he started coding this little website. It kind of is, uh, it lets you see the code and see the result of the code at the same time. So you can see the HTML and you can see the result on two different screens simultaneously, kind of like a frame set. Before like, like everyone listening, yeah. you're before like Wix and stuff where oh, you yeah. could copy and right. it was not, you actually had to like code. You had to know the code. <laughs> to get things to start. Like it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So go ahead, go HTML ahead. HTML5. And I stood over his shoulder for about a week, week and a half until he made this little website for me. And I was like, this mm -hmm. is incredible. Then I logged in to AOL. I went to a uh, rent -a center and I got a Packard Bell. Mm -hmm. I called it a Packer from hell. <laughs> Two gigabyte hard drive. Yeah. Oh God. It crashed crazy. all the time. And uh, I got the big old CRT monitor and I got this list for forty nine ninety five. I think it was a hundred something thousand AOL subscribers. And I emailed them this website link and I got $5,000 worth of signups in one weekend. I said, oh my goodness. So you s already saw, I can use this marketing, tool. marketing, but also go into the risk part, mm -hmm. put in time, yep. put in money. Uh, knowing this may or may not work at yeah, all. Right. And if you try to explain it to most people, everyone at that time, they'd be like, dude, nobody what the hell are you? You're crazy. Can figure it out. I love when I'm called yeah. crazy because I'm like, good, I'm on the I'm right on the, path. I'm on the right path. I say, look, if you see me talking to myself, that means I'm getting good advice. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so, right. So this guy goes back to Arabia <laughs> and I'm now sitting here and I go, wow, let me take a crack at this. So I go to the bookstore, Barnes and Noble. I start sitting down and I start studying all the books. I learned HTML, PHP, ASP, Java, C plus, all my own. I love all that. those languages. And There's then I just no started applying it. There's no excuses to not get excuses. knowledge, man. The knowledge, my mother told me, everything wow. you want to know is in a book. So true. Just reading changed my life. That's, That's it. Yeah. And I would just research at the bookstore, take my notes, go home and duplicate it on the computer. Wow. It became pretty good. Then I made this. Here's how the business started. I made this one website. Uh, it was a mortgage template. I was experimenting. I said, let me just try this mortgage website. This mortgage company in the Yellow Pages. Let me try to make one just so I could see how I can do it because there's no products. It's really something just more of a template. A friend of mine stops by who had a mortgage brokerage. He no, saw Another it. like coincidence, right? Another coincidence from the universe. Yeah, he man. Goes, hey, man, how much would you charge me to make one of those for me? Bing, 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 bing. My, my brain went right. crazy. You know what I started doing? Mm, I got man. the yellow pages out. I started telemarketing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, cold calling mortgage companies. Thursday, Friday, go out and sell them. Saturday and Sunday, put the websites up. Wow. I used the one template that was really, really nice. I tweaked it a little bit more, though. Change the colors, change the logos, and change the contact and form information and some of the pricing and interest rates. That was it. <laughs> I was making 10 grand a week in the blink of an eye. Wow. I was dot-com marketing group. I built it into a multi-million dollar corporation, which eventually I, we got acquired by Glowbench Systems. They were doing uh, LED uh, marketing on bus benches. And then that eventually we got bought out for mm. millions of dollars by the Amber Alert company. What, what I love about having these conversations, like you sharing openly mm -hmm. is fake people would be like, I had this perfect business plan, <laughs> be, but it makes you fail. Cause right. you think if I don't have it, but you're yeah. like, no man, I, 
this thing looked cool. I saw a web. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait, what? You can code and I can try Mark. Mm. Then you started, oh, maybe I can try to build a site, not knowing, not knowing, <laughs> not making anything from doing that at that time yeah. with a perfect, but feeling you were onto something mm-hmm. yeah. and like following that passion. Yeah. But then it started leading to because people get it twisted and they mm-hmm. think like the visions can be blurry. Yeah. And you're just following it. And they think you should have all this, this, and this. I'm like, if I knew this, yeah. like when I was here, mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have even been able to comprehend that. Exactly. Like I had to learn this <laughs> learn or this. I would have been like, oh man, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. The fundamentals. I went through the fundamentals right. from the bottom level up, mm. you know, like I told you before, I like to start at the bottom of everything I do so I can figure out what it's like to be this person yeah. inside of the structure of the company. And for me, I was just trying to find out wow. how can I become an expert at this so I could spread information around the world. Um, and uh, I had some success with my little insurance program that I was selling. And I was like, this is going to be incredible. And my friend stops by and says, how much would you charge me to make That's one of those? So and that cool. was it. That's all I needed to hear. That was all I need. I realized, wait a minute, nobody has any of these websites. And wow. So I formed a corporation, dot com, D-O-T-C-O-M, dot com marketing group. And we just exploded. On Wait, the scene. And this was like 2000. No, that's 1990, uh, 1998, 1999. Oh, my God. Right. You go on Sunbiz, you'll find it. You know, oh, old, I was I mean, a, it's a senior in high school. The, corp- the corporation has been sold and acquired. But I think it's, the actual date should still be there. Probably 1998, 1999. Yeah. It's a complete beginning of. That was like when we had our first yeah. in my pen where like you dial it's yeah, so that, like a fax machine noise. Yeah. You got wow. mail. <laughs> yes. Old school. Man. So that's so cool. So you, so they bought you out. So mm-hmm. you sold it. Cause I remember yeah. you were like, I retired, kind of didn't retire, I but took I took seven years. years. They gave me a non-compete. Mm. And so it took seven years. I decided to coach and train my kids. You know, um, I have five kids. I, they wanted to play sports. There weren't a lot of programs. My city that I moved to, Western Florida, didn't have a lot of programs. It was a new city. Mm. I helped build the YMCA in West Broward. If you go in that YMCA, there's a gigantic uh, granite stone in the center of the building that says, you know, Billy Carson and family. Oh, that's cool. That's Isn't that where Dan Marino uh, lived too? That's West- I used to coach his daughters. Really? That's right. That's Dan awesome. Daughter. I trained both his daughters in basketball and uh, great guy. Uh, and so uh, it was just a great uh, experience going wow. through and, and being a part of that. I, I uh, started a lot of sports programs, built the AAU program, eventually UAAA, G- U.S. Junior Olympics, uh, coached games all over the country, became a very successful basketball coach, mm. uh, 15 gold medals. I mean, you name it. Uh, just uh, It was a great experience. Seven years of just spending time with my family and my kids and having a great time. But staying staying busy in oh, yeah. a totally other way. like Yeah. Still Something about us, like investigating, yeah, and, you know, and I would do things like um, buy pre-construction houses on the side. Okay, you know, so Adams Homes, I love them because you can give them two grand, they'll build a whole house, and then you just sell the house when it's closed, and you make like seventy thousand dollars profit. You wow, know? I was buying. I probably had I don't know thirty or forty Adams Homes. Really, know? it was too easy, and I would buy and flip land and things like that. There were so many ways to easily make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, when it still working hard, but. Yeah. Oh, this is, I have the like revenue to put in to do this now and like the means to do it. Mm -hmm. Are you, do you still do much with real estate or? I still speculate from time to time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where does that go to Billy of like now I'm starting, I'm going to start like YouTube and and all that. Cause I think like 2007, I I heard you talking Mm -hmm. about. And it, your channel got pulled down. I think it, it started having yeah. success because that's another point when you, you have different levels, people think, well, now he's made it. Yeah. So nope. he doesn't go. It's like it comes you surprise. build a channel up and you're, and you're investing. Yeah. Like I, I've invested so much throughout the years in this podcast mm-hmm. too, that people have not seen where I've, yeah. I've lost, I've won, I've, but it's a lot. They yeah. pull your channel down and it's not like you had to do that. Like no. you already had, yeah, I was a lot of financial, that. but what made you like, they pulled your channel down. Mm-hmm. Were, were you starting, like when you were starting your mm-hmm. YouTube, were you starting to talk about like stuff we're doing now? Or was it like Emerald, ta- like a combination of it? I was getting it? into a lot of esoteric wisdom. I was talking about um, ancient civilizations, but the real true story, what I claim to be the true version of history, not the story that we're getting in mainstream. Mm. Um, and I was talking about uh, things like... Um, 
now, which has now been, if it happened now, that website would have been the biggest, those YouTube account would have been one of the biggest ones because I was talking about uh, brown dwarf stars. Mm. I was talking about red dwarfs, orbital periods of these red dwarfs and brown, which NASA has now found through the WISE telescope system. And it's now mainstream. Wow. I'm sure you read a classes. brief history of time. Yeah. And so, but back then it was like, this is no good. You're, you're making stuff up. <laughs> now it's peer reviewed science. Right. Right. Wow. And uh, what, the reason why I went to YouTube is because my daughter, mm. my oldest daughter, who's now 33, she was playing basketball in uh, junior high school and she was becoming this phenomenal basketball player. So I took a video clip of her and I uploaded it to YouTube in 2007 and started sending it out to college coaches. Oh. And I was the very first person in history, in the history of the world, to send a college coach a YouTube video. Really? And the New York Times. So, so you're always article. seeing ahead with Always that. seeing ahead. Always. Always seeing the future. And there's a, still an article on the New York Times today from hmm. that year. You can Google Billy Carson, New York Times. And they did a whole article on me because I started the era of armchair recruiting with that. And the video wow. became popular. It got thousands and thousands of views. She ended up getting college letters from it. <laughs> and then I started on the side a free nonprofit for college recruiting for athletes. Mm. And I got thousands of athletes the ability to, you know, get looked at by college coaches all over the country. And I became a successful pro. So I said, like, you know what? I'm going to do this also for the knowledge I have. This, I've yeah. been waiting for this. So I've been, I'm bit, I was doing blogs and not blog, but they, they were called forums back then. And it takes so forums. much. You got to film it. Yeah. You, it, then you have to get like Man. transfer. <laughs> it's not like you could just airdrop it. And like back now, then it was so hard because everything was so slow. It's so, now I, I did, we did a, a like four hour show the other day and I'm like, why is this taking yeah. 19 minutes to Imagine upload? Imagine on the old dial up. <laughs> oh my God. It would have taken like four days at least. So you get on. So I started dropping the knowledge on YouTube and that account had gotten to over 1 million subscribers. I was one of the very wow. first people to over 1 million. And then I go to log in one day and boop, it's gone <laughs> because I was putting out too much fake news, I guess you want to call it. They, that term didn't exist back then, but that was the reason. <laughs> That's what they, they yeah. like flagged it. Talking to the pyramids, you know, saying the pyramids were not not 5,000 years old. They were much older based on my hypothesis. Wow. Talking about orbital periods of rogue planets and, and uh, brown dwarf stars, which have now been verified and peer reviewed. Uh, a planet that was talked about in Sumerian tablets called the, the 10th planet. NASA now has found it three years ago. They call it the ninth planet. No way. And so all this stuff. Man, so now the science so is out. Cool. So they deleted my account for nothing. I was giving out great information, but 1 million subscribers. And I had to start from scratch after I spent all that time, all that money, all that effort. Wow. I was like, wow. And I had to start from zero. People, Bill, people don't realize how it takes so much more work mm -hmm. than you think like, you just get this, you go viral yeah. and in three months you're, but, and it's like, dude, <laughs> yeah. it takes so much work. A lot of work. Cause I kind of gave up on it. I had started another YouTube channel, wow. but I didn't monetize it. And I just would throw stuff up there from time to time. And it grew to like a hundred thousand on its own. Just doing that. Yeah. 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 But then when I met Elizabeth uh, two and a half years ago, she was like, we need to rebrand mm -hmm. and go back in, clean up the YouTube account, give it a new look and reapply for monetization because all the information you're talking about now is all peer reviewed science. And we did that and it got approved, of course. And so, you know, now we're building, it's at 470,000 as of today now. I, that's good, mate. Yeah. You just started that two and a half. Yeah. I finally went through all the stuff to yeah. set up the mom. I'm like, wait, I should have this probably set up to be like starting to yeah. where like revenue can come in with yeah, how yeah. much. Yeah. It helps because you got to pay for all this, all this equipment and all this stuff, man. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I flipped because at times I'm like, I want to keep helping, mm -hmm. but it has to become something that's yeah, self, like self-sustaining. Right. Yes, absolutely. So then I can help more and give more. Yeah. But I didn't realize that was just, Dude, the, the, it, new, it, the new look, look only like, look started up a year your, ago. Your social, so like Instagram and mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. you started, like everyone listening, well, the links will be in the show notes, everywhere we're watching it. Like at, it's at Forbidden Knowledge, right? Even yeah. just Instagram. The number four, Forbidden Knowledge. Yeah, the number four. And to build it up to have over a million people, yeah. what, what did you see? Because your mind's always seeing stuff mm -hmm. kind of ahead and differently. Yeah. What did when you saw, see with that of like, how can I? I was on Facebook and I was uh, just posting, you know, basic bare bones information on Facebook. And then I hear about this 
uh, I was big on forums, web forums. Mm. That was where I was putting my knowledge that you can't, nobody wanted to delete forums. So I was like, let me put my knowledge on forums. Okay. So you had like a following? I had a following on for, web forums. Uh, okay. Okay. Forbidden knowledge. Okay. And then I heard about Instagram. It had just kind of pretty much started. This is 2011. And I'm going Instagram. People are like, yeah, this Instagram is amazing. So I get on Instagram, mm. I get the app and I'm like, oh, these are pictures of like people's food, their cats and stuff. And that's what I used and to And I'm think. like, man, I don't know how this can, how can this work with what I'm doing? Pictures. <laughs> I don't know. So I said, you know what? I downloaded it. I set up an account. I saved it as my name just in case. Right. About a month later, I said, you know what? Let me try something. Mm. I'm going to upload one image and just see what happens. I uploaded an elongated paraca skull from Peru. You know, humans have two parietal plates. This skull only has one parietal plate, which means it's not it's wow. non-human. And it's a massive skull. So it's not from cranial deformation, which is something that indigenous peoples do. This is actually a skull with more mass, which means the brain was much larger, almost a third larger than our brains. Wow. And I was like, this is, let me, let me just throw this up there and see what happens. So I threw that up there with a nice caption underneath. That's the very first post. If somebody can scroll all the way down, they'll find <laughs> that's the first one. That's cool. And it got like four or five people liked it, you know, right. people started commenting. I saw oh, pretty interesting. Let me throw this gigantic Navy ship that's in this underground base underneath a mountain. Let me put this one up here and talk about mm. dumps, deep underground bases that the government has all over the world. And then that started getting more. I said, OK, maybe I got something here. Wow. So gradually, little by little, I would just start posting this information that I knew about and had. And it just started growing like wildfire. <laughs> Not monetize at like this point, like not monetizing or like, I don't even know yeah. if they had. They didn't have any tools back stuff then. Stuff set up. Now, yeah. I didn't start trying to monetize forbidden knowledge. And it wasn't even on Instagram yet. Just in general until 2017 was the first year I activated trying to find ways to capitalize on the knowledge I was putting out via, um, you know, any type of a workshop or a product line or whatever. And the first year was extremely minimal. I think the company made one hundred eighty nine thousand dollars gross that year. Um, yeah, because the expenses are our expenses are crazy, you know. Yeah, and the expenses I, and then but exponentially it just kept going. I, I, I just love people to hear this, Billy, yeah. because like there's a pattern mm -hmm. of success. Yeah, and you can keep seeing it with each thing that you've built. I started mm -hmm. like in the re just doing it here. Yeah, not completely known, but yeah. feeling I was on to something uh -huh. and it didn't just like that put risk, put time. Yep. It started time. growing time it is a lot of time. If you make from 2011 to That's 2017, a huge resource. I had to pay my dues building the mm. following. You see another, another like 10 year <laughs> overnight success. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Like, Oh, you got a million followers and yeah. you just, yeah, but that started time. way back, but you started building it. Mm hmm. Put, and that's the thing you put, it takes time and yeah. money mm -hmm. and people could think, oh man, but yeah, you made 189,000. Yeah. But with the time and the money, if I was to add all that together with other stuff, I lost. I, I lost. I yeah. lost. <laughs> I, and I, but I've, I've been being there, but yeah. you know, you're like on to something mm -hmm. still. Right. Right. Exactly. So and now so just building, man, you know, so now like where, where you are now, mm -hmm. what, what's like one of the main things, is there a huge... <laughs> I hate the word. It's like there are a huge thing you've learned that, that could help other people that, that would be yeah. some trial and error through that. Well, through this type of uh, business that I'm in, I realized I was going completely against the grain. So I had to deal with a lot of adversity, trolls, hate, death threats, um, you name it. I heard you talk about those death yeah. threats. Death threats, you know, so that they're real. That's crazy. I had to create a whole Instagram account where I would, I would screenshot some of those death threats and tag the FBI in them. I heard you talk about that yeah, legal team, legal team, forbidden knowledge. And uh, they started shutting some of these people who are giving me the death threats. I would post that shut down accounts on that account, too. You know, Man. Uh, but going through all that and, you know, and just having to fight a complete uphill battle. But knowing in my mind, seeing the future, knowing that my way of teaching and my information was the future. Mm. And so forbidden knowledge, eventually I saw multiple legs underneath one umbrella. So I have a, um, uh, a record label, forbidden knowledge record label, conscious music, which hit billboard in 2018 and, uh, four categories for eight weeks. <laughs> I saw, I'm telling you, if I was to read your whole bio off, 
I, I, I have that in my notes. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, awesome music. Yeah, so we did the music production book uh, publishing company. Yeah. So now we give book deals to people and publish their books underneath Forbidden Knowledge. That's awesome. You know, and we have right now three bestsellers uh, working on our fourth one right now. Elizabeth has a standing order of 100,000 books for her book that just came out last week. Oh, no way. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, 100,000 copies in one order. What's it called? It's called the Mother Earth Effect. The Mother Earth Effect. Everyone, look it up. So, is it on? So, it's on pre-order or it's, or it's it, available. It launched. Nice. It's, launched. it's the worldwide already, and it's that's launched. amazing. You get it on Amazon.com. The Mother Earth Effect, An amazing, inspiring book about the power of grounding. Mm. Uh, and that book is going to light up everything. It's going to change a lot of people's lives. Uh, and so, awesome. you know, we got that. And then we have our e-commerce, which is our web sales division for all the products that support the, the conscious community. Um, you know, and we just, we just keep building on, we have our forbidden knowledge TV network, which is growing in leaps and bounds over 6,000 shows. Is that, do you have like that set up where you have like sponsor, like sponsors? It's a subscription based. Oh, uh, that's right. You told yeah. me that before. $7 and 77 cents a month and you get access to stuff you're not going to find on YouTube. It's only on forbidden knowledge TV. Okay. And it's highly, high quality, highly produced content. Initially, we, you could see the growth because we had to start off I with just that. getting content. Then you could see the growth and development too. Now we have an award-winning documentary. That's so cool. My first documentary that I finally produced from start to finish. It's got Independent Film of the Year Award. Wow. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah. Black that, Night Satellite, The Untold Story. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And, that, and you get that through like the subscription? It's on there. It's only on Forbidden Knowledge TV. Mm. We have a lot of new show. We have so many shows. I think we have like launched uh, in the last eight months, maybe 10 brand new series. Really? Yeah. All, all on that like specific network that you have. Yep. And various different wow. things. Psychotherapy. Uh, we have uh, Nick Pope, the former Minister of Defense of the UK. doing oh, wow. a show called After Contact. Uh, talking about what do we do after we we know aliens are real we know that they're real now what do we do after contact what's life going to look like going forward into mm. the future uh the great series um and my egyptian mystery school which is uh 39 or 40 episodes yeah 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 you know just just so much content up there it's just incredible how much content's up there that's cool wow i know i i just have seen a glimpse because i'm like trying to figure out what all is it that he's, uh, that he's doing, man? Like, where do I start with his? We have 140 <laughs> social media accounts, you know? And so I started realizing soon that I have forbidden knowledge has so much information and so many various wide array of topics. But I saw that some people like specialized information. So if I make an account just for this, oh. an account just for that, an account just, then I can feed that information there and build and I can send it all back to one. And it mm. worked. And so, you know, in total across all platforms, I have 5 million followers. Wow. Yeah. So having 140, did you start running each one of those yourselves before you started delegating them out? Well, you grow to that number. You know, right now my son who works for me, my son, Justin, he runs a social, he's a social media manager. He runs about 50 of them from his phone alone and his other computer and his other device. I run probably eight from my device, you know. Hmm. Um, and then we have uh, some other admins uh, and all the different groups and things that we have that run some. And then we have um, the, another person we just brought in and hired actually two weeks ago who's also running some. And then we have one person that runs just, I have more than one YouTube account also, that's running for like Forbidden Fitness. That one person just runs Forbidden Fitness. I saw that pop up yeah. when I was going through your stuff. I'm like, yeah. wait, is this his too? Yeah. And it, it was. I'm like, yeah. oh man, <laughs> he's on it. <laughs> Got a lot. That's cool though. Is, is that how you connected with, uh, oh man, I'm the worst of names, but a great dude I met at your house last time. Uh, Daru? I think the MMA fighter yeah. and trainer that there was two of them. They're both really cool. Right, right. Yeah, Daru, that's the guy. I think so. Yeah, he's I, the owner of, a, he's got his own gym. Down, I went uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah nice. Talked to him about being on. Yeah. I said, nice. He has got a show there and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be on his podcast very soon. Probably. He has a cool setup there. Yeah. Did, did you meet him through doing like the fitness thing? or Actually, through? I was doing a huge roundtable discussion, which was being live streamed to my TV network. And I had, it was me, 19 Keys, Mike Rashid, and Dr. B Serious. 
and he heard about it through Mike Rashid, who I guess Mike Rashid is a bo- was a professional boxer. Oh, maybe still is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And he asked me if this guy can come over, and he ended up coming over, and so did uh, Timberland, who's also their friend. Yeah. At least he trains Timberland. Okay. So Timberland and this guy show up at my house uh, and sat there and watched us film that three hour episode, and then we just you know hit it off from there. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. I, I went, yeah, he's the real deal. I yeah. went by and I met some of his team members. Mm-hmm. They have so much respect. And then I saw a clip of, uh, of Joe Rogan, like talking about with another MMA fighter mm. about him specifically wow. and saying how he is like really sp- like respected yeah. in the community, he is. He's which, which deal. says a lot, but I remember your house, his arms like this big. I'm <laughs> like, what's do. up, man? Like, don't take me out. Super nice dude. Super nice dude. Incredible guy, man. A lot of character. You know, he grew up down here from around the way. Came from the hood. I know. That's what he I'm telling you. Hood. He's going to, I'm going to have yeah. him on the show nice. and we're going to do the same thing because he started opening up yeah. jail. Yeah. Again, that adversity. Right. Immediate respect. Now he right? trains champions. I know. Yeah. I love it. There, he, there, there's this uh, girl in there that was really cool and she, had won, like she was like a three-time world champion. Oh. And I was just like, man, she, I, she trains oh, others now. That's my sister. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Tell her not to be, uh, uh, how many, how many, uh, I was thinking, <laughs> how, I wonder how many dudes have like smarted off to her, just like got taken down. Listen, if she puts you in a headlock, it's over. <laughs> I would, man. Pete, when you know what you're doing, like you do not want to mess with that. That's my little sister. Whoa. She's six feet tall. Could she, she was, take you down or if are she you grabs me, I'm in trouble, but if I got to stick and move, <laughs> but I wouldn't do that. But I she, know. she, um, she was about 300 pounds at the age of 35. Whoa. And she just made a decision. I want to be a body. I want to be a, a, a bodybuilder. And in six months, she competed in her first bikini competition and okay. actually won it. Wow. And then got bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. Um, that's cool. Yeah. So she's incredible. Man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. But like, uh, Billy, I, I, I appreciate, like, we will definitely need to do more stuff oh, yeah. in the future. Yeah, for sure. Like, this has been great for I me. Get you on my podcast too, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, let, we'll we'll make sure we set it up. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I can't wait. And yeah. I, and like something else before we get off. I want to level one now. I like how you talked about something I connected with because we work so hard, mm-hmm. and how you like to like travel for adventure and mm-hmm. exploration. Yeah. And when we're talking about the free thinking. I have continued to learn so much more through like travel, like yeah. going like to Sierra Leone, West Africa mm-hmm. and seeing the news was like, you can't be there. You yeah. can't. And <laughs> I, I spent times like we went through this, like cross these little like bridges. I felt like I was Indiana Jones, yeah, like yeah. on the, <laughs> and Suspension we, bridges. we, we had to meet with, a. Uh, the head like chief wow. to get permission to pass mm-hmm. and like sit down and like eat with them. Yeah. But it was so like the stuff, they took me to this like waterfall yeah. life change and like some yeah. of the kindest mm-hmm. people that, yeah. and just open up my eyes and so many did nothing like the news Nothing would say like some of the most beautiful oceans. Mm-hmm. I, I thought I'm not kidding. Yeah. I thought Africa was like, South Africa, lions and tigers. Yeah. I was so ignorant. I didn't know. Yeah. Like, I really didn't. You talk continent. about Egypt. I always, like Egypt's in Africa. Yeah. Like, it's such a huge, there's so many countries. So like, huge. Sierra Leone is like, it looks like Hawaii. It's all mountainous. Mm-hmm. It's tropical. Yeah. Some of the most beautiful beaches. Yeah. I, I met people, it's predominantly Muslim, but Muslims and Christians totally get along there, get yeah. married. Mm-hmm. The news would have you believe yeah. that doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of white people there. Yeah. There, there's like mixed. It's all mixed. Yeah. It's a huge area. I mean, well, Africa is a huge continent. Number uh, one. Massive. So much. Just, and that's just one example. I mean, yeah. starting to travel, that's something that Aiba has helped push. I've seen other places yeah. all over the world and mm-hmm. starting to, but, but I like yeah. how you talk about it's cool to chill and relax, mm-hmm. but you love also like the adventure. Yeah. I like to get out there. I've climbed underneath the Great Pyramid, inside the pyramids, gone underneath the Sphinx. I've been to temples 
in the world where like less than one tenth of one percent of the world will ever know it's there. And then I've gone into underground hidden crypts inside of it. I've That's been given so the cool. keys by pyramid priests to open up ancient chambers that nobody's has been in for tens of oh, thousands man. of years. And that's all this crazy stuff. It's been such an amazing um, experience. I've walked on you know, the outback with, with the Aboriginal elders. I've done walkabouts. I've, I've done everything. That's so, sp- isn't that, d- yeah. that like just opens your, yeah, your perspective. You can't read, changes. you can't learn that in a book. No, you can't learn, getting the knowledge from them directly. That experience. Man, listen, it's, there's right. no book on the planet that can give you that kind of knowledge. Yeah, and isn't that another part of, the, the blessing and knowledge of, of what wealth combined with spirituality can give you. Yes. Because like to think me being that kid in jail and stuff mm-hmm. to think, Oh, I could be flying across and we're going to Dubai yeah. and Abu Dhabi. And then they're going to take me out and show me the, the technology of these new floating mm-hmm. homes they're building underwater yeah. that where they also have a thing they're building where they can make it snow outside on oh, this wow. man-made Island. And the dude that's like the prince of the something was like taking us on a private. Wow. And I'm just like, you step back and Mm -hmm. it's like the kid that was in jail. Yeah. Never would have, if I would have stayed locked in to, Mm -hmm. you know, like you growing up, like in the rough part of Miami and stuff, people would have, if you were like, one day I'm going to be going with the Aborigines and the chiefs. Getting out there, you know? It's just, and when you do it, when you leave your zip code, your life and your perspective on life changes completely, mm. you know? And I've been through all the things, you know, I've been through growing up in the hood. You can't avoid it. You know, I got a bullet wound here, right? Bullet wound right here. Wow. Stab wound across, across my uh, left shoulder here. I've been through it, man. I've seen mm. people getting killed on my block. I've been through all the, you know, but man, I'm still here, you know? Right. And I'm so, and because I'm still here, that means, and I survived all of that. Mm. My mission is that much stronger. My mission to bring knowledge, wisdom, and teach peace to the world has become that much stronger because I survived the gambit. Right. And I made it. So, and you, when you go in and you talk, and if they're like, "Yeah, but you don't get it, Billy." Yeah. <laughs> like you, you got uh, three Rolls Royces. Right, right. And it's like, man, no, man. On, no, man. You've li- you literally have the scars. I got the scars to man. show it. And I, you know, res- I respect that. One of the reasons why my team, the teams mm. I coach respected me so much is because I did all the drills with them, all, right. the, all the running with them. Weight room day, I did the weights with them. Mm. They could never look back at me when I'm yelling at them from the sideline and say, you don't know what it's like out here. I right. Know what it's like. Because that, I remember I did everything they had to do. That's a great, for all the business owners and stuff listening, that's a, perfect like teaching example of leadership Mm -hmm. regardless of your company because remember we're talking about yeah we delegate stuff out for time i have people come help clean and all that Mm -hmm. but i'm never above if i go back to dream shine someone's Mm -hmm. taking the trash i'm there i'll help grab i won't be like i'm the owner i'm the and and they respect if i'm ever Mm -hmm. not it's because i'm so freaking busy i'm having to do this yeah but some people get that twisted yeah, yeah. and think <laughs> if I get here, I should, I'm better than that. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm, I'm outsourcing my time. Yeah. But a I'm leader, like, a leader leads from the front period. Right. You lead from the front. But then there's a time when you build other leaders and then you're like strategizing. Exactly. Cause and you're, now you're the creative person. Now your mind is free to create. Right. That could be a whole other show because yeah. you go through a battle at that level I know. Where, I know. where you're thinking that because I'm me and it, uh, what if my team doesn't see me on the front anymore? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Is that me? Even though you're working like 20 times harder now, mm-hmm. totally behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. There's like another level of a mindset of, oh, man. Yeah. You just got to break through. It's all, all these are breakthroughs. Yeah. All of them are breakthroughs, you know? Yeah. And you become better for it. That's the truth. Yeah. And, and you realize I'm actually able to build more and help more people mm-hmm. by getting out of my own way now. Yep, exactly. And they may not like my ego wants them to see me lead from the front because mm-hmm. I know the importance of it. But now I want to get someone else to lead from the front. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I got to overcome that. Yep, yep, yeah. Soon one day I'll be on the show talking about how, how we turn it into an IPO. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be it, man. And we'll be celebrating when you do, man. Yes. We're going to be, a, you know, you can, you've come to a couple of parties already. We're going to have a great time. <laughs> I can't. Oh, well, uh, see, that's another thing. Like phenomenal appreciates mm-hmm. 
and celebrates phenomenal. Yeah. Like when Billy IPOs and is a billionaire, I'm not going to be like, oh man, I have it. I'm going to be like, <laughs> do the first one texting like, hell yeah, I just saw your thing on the... Yeah. I'm going to be like, probably like as excited as you are because you. it's cool. It's inspiring. Yeah. Like, cause yeah. you care, right. you know, Yeah. The, like the right mindset doesn't look at it as, Oh, that means that it's like, I can do that too. Like exactly. We all win. He did it. When one of us wins, we all win. Yeah. And then one gives you, can give you the, the blueprint. And when the blueprints out there, it makes it so much easier. Like I have a great blueprint for this whole thing now. Because I went through around a couple of circles to get to where I'm at. Now yeah. I can tell somebody, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do that. Versus, you know, watching them spin in circles too. Right, right. Well, what, what's, what's, the, what's the best way for everyone? We'll, we'll get all the information, put the links and yeah. stuff and all the show notes and everything. Mm-hmm. But is there any specific like websites or anything you want them to go to to sure. get any certain blueprint or workshops or upcoming things in the yeah. moment? Oh, just go to Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Samsung TV, or the web at 4BK.TV. And you'll find a lot of stuff there that will ch- help change your life. Your whole paradigm will shift. Okay. Okay. And if they jump on to the, the main IG, because I know you have yeah. 140. <laughs> forbidden Knowledge with the number four. Forbidden Knowledge. I think we're at 1.3 million. It's going to hit 1.4 million any day now. Uh, sub- uh, followers, blue check verified. So there's are a lot of fake accounts out there, as you know. They just keep making them. It's hard. You report them, but they make them as fast as you can report them now. I know. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is crazy. No, it is. I, I it's legitimately b- verified. I could walk to Billy's house right now. Legitimately <laughs> successful. Legitimately has built these business. Yeah. Is everything that he says he is. Thank you. And also, yeah, check him out right there on IG. And also there's a link in your IG to all your other stuff too. Yeah. So listen, everyone, my man, Billy, like I I can't, I'm not going to break it up in a bio. I'm holding the book up right here. Um, Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. (laughs) (laughs) I was starting to already start on that first word. It's a fancy way of saying summary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that yeah. compendium of the Emerald Tablet Tablets, a beginner's guide, mm-hmm. and so and so much more. Just check out Billy. Check out at the number four bidden knowledge. This has been amazing, my man. Okay. Listen, everyone. Remember, like the takeaway. Let me see if I can read my own terrible handwriting <laughs> right here. Like for real. Take take this with you right now. Look, we're sitting here. Shadow sitting here. If you're listening, I got my little dog. We got three, three different external shades. But what does that matter? Mm. What is the color of your consciousness? Mm. Powerful. Think on that. That's this it. man said it, and that's that's the truth. That is the truth right there. It's all about that lightness versus the darkness. Mm. So never settle. Never give up and keep elevating beyond. All right. Peace. Boom.